Hi. This is stream 123 for me. An interesting number. 0123. Anyway. I'm working on right now a prototype game to test out some ideas and some designs for a real game that I've been developing since roughly November. And Twitch is screwing up. It's saying that I'm hosting someone again. All right. <laughs> I don't know. It's difficult to start my stream without it uh, the auto-hosting kicking in again. And I, yeah, I'm not sure exactly the right way to do it. But anyway, I start out slow and just kind of wave at the camera for a while so people don't really miss anything at the at the beginning. But in case you're watching this on YouTube, let me give you a little recap. I'm working on a game. You can see it. Uh, there's a link to more information there. That'll bring you to my notebook here. It's going to be a multiplayer RPG with retro style 2D pixel art. Just because I'm not a great artist and I want to get a game going with content and not have to worry so much about the graphics. So... I am still building up the server backend for it. So there's not much to show yet. But I'm getting to the point where I need to make sure I have a good design for the actual game logic, the game components. And I'm going to try to use the entity component system where all of the uh, game data is stored in components. They look like, let's see, for example, in the prototype here, little data structures. So for example, something in the game that has health has their hit points stored in a health component. And a pickup, for example, records whether it's a, a treasure, potion, food, or the exit to the map. Position component has coordinates. So basically you make game entities by mixing and matching these components. So for example, a piece of treasure will have both a pickup component to say it's a treasure and it'll have a position to say where it is on the map. And a monster will have also a position but instead of having a pickup it'll have a monster component which if I had data specific to monsters I'd put here. Right now it's just an empty structure so you can think of it as just a tag saying this entity is a monster. Um, in addition to position and monster you'd also have collider with a mask to say what other things it collides with. And if I wanted to, I could give monsters health. I think I actually do. I give them only one hit point, though. And, yeah, that's about it. So, there's no... You can tell there's no game logic here. It's just data. So, using the components in the game, it's pretty much data-oriented design. Everything is about the data. There's no code in the components. All the code is put into a separate group called systems. And for the prototype I made, the systems are in C++. So here's the, the AI, artificial intelligence system, which basically moves all the monsters trying to get to the player. There's the generation system, which generates new monsters, spawn, spawning new monsters. You can see it here, add monster if it gets down to there. There's the pickup system, so that it, it, if, a, if our hero or our player steps on a pickup, it will do the appropriate thing depending on what kind of pickup it is. Hey there, Leftress. Mr. Voice Actor Supreme. So yeah, Adam actually got back to me, by the way, Leftress. He had already pretty much committed to the voice actor. So he appreciated the, the gesture of me recording lines, but he's going with the voice actor. I did record one take where I did it in a robot voice that he found especially amusing. So, I don't know, maybe we'll do something with that, I don't know. So I suppose it belongs to Adam, so it's up to Adam if he wants to share it on his channel or not. But, yeah, we'll have to pester him tomorrow about it. So yeah, anyway, I'm explaining sort of the systems in the entity component system design here. So, pickup system, is making sure that if the hero collides with a pickup, it does the right thing. So treasure, you get you get more points. Food, you get more health. Potion, you get a potion picked up. 
and most of these pickups, if you run into them, it destroys the pickup, like you'd expect. But there's a special kind of pickup called the exit, which is the exit to the map. So I'm using the pickup system as a way to say, if you collide with the exit, that you have exited the map. And if you exit the map, you basically remove the position component of the hero, basically pluck the hero off the map, and you could consider that a win. Yeah, every time I see the trailer play my version, yeah. <laughs> he said that it would take work to line up the voice take with the video, and I'm like, I could probably do that. But he he's going with his voice actor, so I kind of just let it drop. So what I'm working on today is moving this, the code here from C++ to Lua, everyone's favorite language, right? So here's, uh, for example, I had already ported the uh, Hunger system. Actually, I deleted it from C++. So if you imagine Hunger kind of looked like one of these other systems where it's just a function called update and it does some things. There's usually a loop here to loop over a certain kind of component. So here it's looping over the pickups. The code looks kind of ugly in C++. I think it looks a lot better in Lua. So here's a Lua-based hunger system where we're looping through all the heroes in the game, finding their health and position, and if they have health, position, and hit points, and um, th yeah, this only ha happens one, one, uh, one out of every 10 game ticks, any by the way. Anyway, all these conditions are true. We subtract one from hit point, and if it reaches zero, we add it to the entity's start list, which down here, we kill the entity. So our poor hero dies if he runs out of health due to starvation. So here's where the um, I'm going to be grouping the systems together. The C++ version of that is here, where we are making a collection. I think this collection is just a vector. Yeah, it's just a vector of systems. And the game loops through and runs or updates every system, every game tick. So instead, we're transitioning to here where there's an update and we call every system that we have. Can I explain this in a robot voice? It would help you understand. Okay, let me try to explain the last thing I said, but in a robot voice. Here you see, human, that you have the list of systems. We are going to be moving this into... Lua, it will be described here, and we will loop through the systems and run each system every tick. That's my robot voice. <laughs> hey there, Clavinex. Use the robot voice for sub-notifications. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's sort of an Adam channel botland thing. The bot, all that bot stuff, right? Adam bot. I don't want to steal that. So, if you haven't seen the prototype, it looks like this. It's it's uh, paying homage or homage to the game Gauntlet from 1985, which is a awesome arcade game of the of the era, where you're controlling a hero. You can throw axes to kill the uh, ghosts that are trying to get to you. If the ghost gets to you, you you run out. You lose a bit of health. You pick up treasure to gain score. And there you go. And you can pick up these potions, and what they do is if you are being assaulted by like a whole bunch of enemies at once, you wait till they get close, and then boom, they all die. And of course in the real arcade game there's more like sound effects and particle effects and all that, but this is really just a quick mock-up. I did this in like five days. The game was playable in three, and I, I spent a couple of days refining the UI, so making this graphics up here, and then um, right now, another day or two, porting the systems to Lua. Hey there, Tim. How's it going? Yes, indeed, Turtles. Shout out to Tim, by the way. He's working on his own game, and he has his own game engine written in C++. Check out his stream. He's got a, He's got interesting things for you to see. So anyway, the reason I'm porting the game systems to Lua is because I want the game, the real game, to be running on a uh, cloud-based server cluster. And I don't want to have to constantly be rebuilding the engine, so to speak, or the uh, back end, every time I want to add or change logic in the game system. So with it in Lua, I can basically reload the entire entity 
or the entire system set just by reparsing the Lua. And we do that right now in the prototype and doing it every time you start a new game. But you can even do it every single tick. You can see, well, where the game system's updated, sure, then parse them. And the uh, integration between C, C++, and Lua is pretty straightforward. There's, there's a bit of redundant boilerplate, which I'm going to try to reduce today with some templates. But to, you essentially make a meta table, and then you add functions to it. And this meta table will be used to make objects which mirror the, the equivalent C++ objects. So, for example, the hero is going to mirror this hero structure. So, for example, the hero has a score. Well, this hero in its index function has a score field where if you ask for that, it pushes back onto the Lewis stack the score. So these are like wrappers. I'm going to try to be making wrappers for all 11 component structures using a template because it's really annoying to have to manually type all this stuff. There's a lot of copy-paste and a lot of room for error, so I'm going to try to use a template for that. You missed this morning's stream. You had a bad... Oh, I'm sorry about that. I don't know about you, but right here, it's, we're getting a lot of rain, and we have a leaky roof to deal with today. Feels bad. Feels leaky, man. Component structures like full ECS? Yeah, so here are the components. There are 11 of them. There's collider, generator, health, hero, input, monster, pickup, position, reward, tile, weapon. Those are the components. Human. Again, this prototype game. And then these systems are the AI, the generation, which is used by the generator here to spawn monsters. There's the pickup system for picking up treasure, food, potions, and getting to the exit. There's the firing systems for when we're launching our axes to defend ourselves from the ghosts. Ah, I'm only going to die. And then the player movement system, which does that. There's the rendering system, which is taking these tiles and transmitting them over the network. Let me re reload so you can see that. All of these messages are including these sprites to render, where to put them. So here, put the hero at X1, Y1, Z2. Spinning is, be, is some of these sprites actually spin. So the render system generates those messages that we send over a web socket to the client. And then there's a weapon system, which moves the axe through the air, and when it collides with the monster, does damage. The components are literally data only, right? So it's a data-oriented design. That's, that's the term I've heard. And then the systems basically read the current lists of components and the values of their fields, compute what changes need to be made every game tick, and then write it back to the components. Okay, see you, Clavinex. So yeah, I had a hunger system in C++, and I moved it to Lua, everyone's favorite language. Actually, I've been mentioning to people about the fact I'm translating all of my systems to Lua, and they're like, Lua? Ugh, what are you doing that for? A lot of, lot of Lua haters out there. I, I, I really like it because of the fact that I can reparse it at runtime, don't have to build anything. The interpreter's pretty slick. It's, it's pretty performant for an interpreter. And uh, it, the, this Lua itself is written in pretty clean, pretty generic ANSI C, so it's very portable. It's extremely easy to embed. You only have to do, where do I have that? You only have to do three includes, guard it with an external C if it's in C++. And to make an interpreter, it's extremely easy. You just call Lua, Lua new state. There we go. Lua new state. And if you want the standard libraries that come with it, it's Lua L open libs. And when you're done, you call Lua close. Can't be simpler. Yeah, but I'm going to have a lot of boilerplate with the uh, ad adapters to go between C++ and Lua. So I'm going to try to cut down that boilerplate today by making some templates. So for example, if you look, if I scroll through here, let's start, yeah, let's start here. So we have an index function, a length function, and an iterate function for every kind of component. So that's the one for hero. Oh, we also have one to, to add a hero onto the Lua stack. 
And yeah, this is for the collection. That's plural heroes. And then there's the singular hero has an index as well. And then you have the same thing for health. Health's index length, iterate. And then push. And then a health index. And you have a new index if we allow you to change the component. And then the same thing for position. So you see it gets a bit redundant. The wrappers are all just you know, which component in the list of components of that type and then a pointer to it. So it really begs to be made into a template. So I'm going to try to do that right now. So I already have this templated function generator, function factory, called make component of type or make component type. What it does is it makes the actual component vector, and then capturing that into a bunch of lambdas, or function objects, we uh, build out a table that looks like this. There, there, so there's a function to get the list of components, to create a new one, to destroy one, to kill, which is destroy for most components. For some components, instead we do, we do something special to them. Like if you, if you kill the hero, you don't want to destroy the hero, because if you did that, then the hero's score and health will basically disappear because that's how we keep track of it. So if you die, you want to be removed from the game, but keep your score and health components around. So you'll see, uh, that's why kill is a little bit different from destroy. And then, yeah, there's the get and get Lua index. So I'm going to basically add some more functions here to, that will call to, to uh, replace... Kind of hard to jump around here. If I put a bookmark there, it might be easier. I want to replace all of the boilerplate functions, like here. So instead of static, like, like instead of defining these for every single type, I think what I'll do is have our function factory, function factory, makes make another make another function here for every. Um, every one of these. So this will be a, f a function that we generate. This will be two, this will be two, this and this. So at least five, maybe. And then some of them will have the sixth one, the new index. And they'll mostly be the same, but a, a few of them, a few differences. Like, for example, the health index has fields for HP, but the position has fields for X and Y. So that's the sticky point. It's, with templates, it's, the sticky point is always where do the instances of the template vary. So this I could probably do with having a collection of fields. So pairs, so like X and then the code to run whenever that field is looked up. And then the, what the, the template could do is instead of having if else's, I could have a uh, lookup of the provided collection of fields and deal with it that we deal with it that we deal with it that way okay if i was going to build this up to a set of t functions i guess the first one would be index for the collection right so we'll have a standard function and it is oh i already forgot <laughs> it returns int and it's given the lua state int Lua state. And this is collection index. And then collection length, collection iterator, the same. Collection len and collection iterate. And then we have a uh, push and then an index okay the push has a slightly different signature and then an index and then sometimes a new index so there's the uh, push so change this around a little bit right so this is in more generic index uh i guess we'll just call it push and then there were two more, right? It was um, index. So this collection index, and then we want, uh, hold on, let me think about this. Single index? 
component index. And then component new index. Right. And some of these will have extra things captured. Like this is not static. We need access to where? Where does it show that? I guess this could have been static. Oh no, it goes to component types, right? So some of them need to capture more things than others. I think that's what I want though. So let's try to build this a uh, one thing at a time, right? So here's index. Let's go to our uh, function a uh, factory. Here it is, and we'll try to build that same thing in the in the template. So this is collection index, right? Lua state Lua, right? Yes, and it returns an int. So the self is that okay? Here we need to uh, be given the string. So let's make that a parameter. I guess we're defaulting that, so we'll put the parameter here. Wrapper. There's two of them, right? This is the collection wrapper name. And then there's the component wrapper name. Because some of them, you can't just take, tack an S on the it's a hero, so you had an E-E-S at the end. Right, so this is collection wrapper name. And that Lua like it's a C API, so it wants a C string. And then let's make this more generic. Component index. And then this is components info. And then here's this type is one of the arguments we're given, right? Magento is slowly killing you. What's ma Magento? Okay, a type, right? So type. And then this becomes, uh, okay, so we need the other, the other function. So let's, let's build that one. Oh, I think it's an e-commerce platform. <laughs> an e-commerce platform from hell. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. I should not laugh at your pain. All right, yeah, I need I need that function. So what I'll do is I'll make the function first up here. We'll fix this indentation somehow. So this is going to be const auto... Uh, push equals capture the components this is now generic right in uh, component index or index I guess I'm just using index here yeah I guess laughing is one way to deal with the pain and stay sane yes I, I would agree I hope you get through your magento hell soon Okay, this is components info, and then here we can use type. Actually, I think I will need to capture type to do that. And actually, I'm this component types. Components is the vector itself. Right, so it's comp so this becomes component. Actually, this we have to capture the list. Ah, boy, <laughs> the list one is up here. So really, let's say this, and say this is const auto list, so that I can reuse that down here. Does it actually need components? No, it doesn't. So it's list and type, and then we just say list. 
Yeah, because that's the components. And then here I need the type. That's T. Right? I name it T. T. Right. Okay. Instead of hero. Let's call it component. And then we'll call this one script component. I need another type here, don't I? Or actually, you know what I can do is I can declare the type here based off of the template. That's what I'm going to do. Let's make a bookmark and move down to there. So this structure, and then go back. So we'll actually define the type here based off of the other type. We'll call this script component. And this becomes a T. Ain't that clever? Then we can use that type inside. Script component. What's the cool thing about templates is uh, we can um, make things based off of the template arguments inside of the template. All right. This becomes component. And then here, that was, what did I name that one? Component wrapper name? Where am I? Here. So I need to capture that and use it here c string cool and then push is used here actually looks like we're using list type actually are we using type not using type list uh push and component wrapper name right and collection wrapper name Yeah, it's stream 0123. We'll never have that coincidence again, right? Well, actually, I guess we could say 0246. That'll be interesting. We're, we're, we're not going to have any more binary streams, unfortunately. That's I'm kind of sad about. Okay, so let's rewrite this to be more generic. Sure. Actually, um, yeah, that's fine. Impl is, pu is a public structure once you get to know it. At least I think this will work. Components, so here it's just list. And then this is push. Right? Now let me, before I get too far, I want to build this. Okay, these are all broken. So let me comment these out for now. I just want to make sure that this compiles before I get too deep into this template stuff. Fix my little template issues. The first build of the day always takes a while. Oh, look, it worked. We are good to go so far. So I just need to do the same thing for, with the, what is it, five or six other things. Actually, we can put that in now, right? Component type dot push equals push. We can put, put that where it belongs, right there. So that's that. So we need collection len, iterate, and then index and new index. So let's do len next. Len looks like this. You might steal my four digit thing. Yeah, I, I kind of reg regret a little bit using four digits because that's sort of pretentious. That assumes I'm going to do like a thousand streams. Look at the little artifacts. That's because it's dark today. A little pretentious of me, I think. But but then I'm like, if I get to a thousand streams, what am I gonna do? I'll have to <laughs> I'll have to do something. Nine ninety nine. I'll have to overflow, right? <laughs> you won't be able to quit for a long time. Yeah, I'm kind of kind of getting addicted to it. Some people I know are getting close to that thousand mark, right? What's isn't Adam at uh, almost six hundred fifty? What happens when I hit a 10K? Hopefully I get to retire. <laughs> I don't know. Throw a big party, I guess. All right. 
I have that in my clipboard, right? Okay, so I'm going to add it down here. Component type dot collection index equals. We'll capture some stuff, but then here's what we want. This. All right. I need the component, the collection wrapper name, because that goes here as a C string. And it looks like I need, okay, this is list, right? List. And this is components info. That's it. That was easy. Let's put a bookmark there. I don't need that one. Okay, next is iterate. How did I lose my, uh, okay, let's find it. Heroes iterate. There we go. Put a bookmark there. Hey there, Buff Seagull. How are you doing? I was just thinking, do I, uh, yeah. I recorded um, my own take on Adam's uh, trailer, and I sent him to Adam. And although he's not going to use them, I had fun making them. And I was thinking, could I play this on my stream? I don't know, because I gave, I guess I gave them to Adam. It's his now. I'd have to ask him for his permission, right? I iterate. Here we go. Component type dot it collection iterate equals capture something. And it looks like, whoops. Misclicked. Lost my place. I didn't send it to you, Playing With Scissors? No. I sent it directly to Adam. We can blame Leftress. He inspired me to uh, record it myself. Watch out now, guys. Playing With Scissors got that sword. He's not only playing with scissors, he's playing with the sword in my channel. All right, so this, we need list, and again, collection wrapper name, because this is that. And that's list. Heroes info becomes collection info, right? Components info. All right, check any. Okay, this becomes just index. This is script component. And that's um, component wrapper name goes here. And last hero is last component. I'm trying to make it generic, right? Well, and this becomes, oh, we need push. So list push, push. All right. Yeah, how's monkey? How's monkey doing, Tim? Tim was saying earlier that he had trouble sleeping, right? Where, where did he say that? Missed this morning stream, had a bad night of sleep, just couldn't wake, really annoyed at yourself for trying to get over it and move on. Yeah, I hate it when I have trouble sleeping. Either can't fall asleep or uh, can't wake up. It sucks. We're getting old. <laughs> All right, that's iterate. And what's left? Component index, component new index. Okay, we can do this. Component. I'll, I'll steal from uh, uh, health this time. So let's steal this. And it goes here, right? Component type dot component index. Okay, script health becomes script component. It looks like we need the um, component wrapper name because that goes here. Field name. Okay, here's where it gets complicated because the fields are going to be, at least that field is going to be different for every component, right? Actually, they all will be. Actually, no. I can I can cheat on that one. No, I don't even have to cheat. It's just um, component, right? You mean that component? I mean a hero. How come no one told me? I forgot to make that generic. 
that's component. Every component has an entity ID, so that's that that I could do. But this part is going to be trickier. How about we'll make that one first, and then we'll try to um, in this else. I'll mark it to do because I'll do it in a minute. Toed, to do lookup field in provided uh, field to index logic function, right? And yeah, so I'll do that in a second. There's index and there's new index. You got bullied, above Seagull got bullied for green color last night? What green color? I don't remember there, there being a green color. Oh, your name? Ah, who cares? <laughs> green, it's not easy being green above Seagull. Just remember that. You have to uh, stay dedicated to your green color. It's, green is never quite as, as hot as pink. So you have to, uh, hey there, bug found. How's it going? I like, I like red for some reason in chat. Although occasionally I will switch to pink just to say chickens, but that's because Adam wants me to. Okay, what? How come it's not completing? Do I have a bug? Let's see. Build. Let's see if I got a bug. No, I don't have a bug. IntelliSense is coming up dry here. I think it was component new index, right? And then paste. What about pink chickens? Uh, that's what... You don't, you don't remember playing with scissors? It was a long time back. Adam said to me, every once in a while, change your color to pink and just type chickens. And people will be wondering, why did he write chickens in pink? And that would just become a joke. <laughs> All right, so this is script component. We need to capture component wrapper name because that goes here. And it looks like we'll also have to do the same thing. I'll just comment this out as an example. Looks good to me. Did I miss anything? Component new index, index, push, iterate, length, index. Look, I think we're good. I just need to handle these fields. I don't need that marker anymore. I, lo I lost my mar other marker? Shoot. Okay, down here. I need to handle these to-dos. I think what I'll do is I will have a another set of functions that we pass in. Not functions, um, collections. And can we just own them? We, we can make that shared, right? Shared pointer uh, to a map from string. You guys are going to love me for these uh, uh, nested data structures. Shared pointer to a map of strings to functions which don't need to return anything, but instead just do something with a component, right? So that would be a T star. Component. That, that. So this is indexers. And then a similar thing for new indexers. Right? Okay, for new indexers, there's going to be a value, and so I need to provide it with the Lua. So Lua state Lua, so it can pull it off the stack. Yeah, you guys are going to love, you guys already love the, these nested data structures, don't you? <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh, playing with scissors. Did you lose your Atom sub? Feels bad, man. It's super windy where you are. It's super rainy where I am. I got a leaky roof. 
doesn't it doesn't rain in, in Southern California too much, but when it does, man, flooded streets, leaky roofs. While watching me write this C++ Lua interface makes you think that an easier interface layer must exist, or at least it, it, there's probably a generator tool out there that does this, but uh, you know me, I like to do stuff from scratch. And I'm going to make this function factory once and never look at it again. It'll pro I'll probably hide it away and... Um, it's all boilerplate gener it's boiler this is really is sort of a code generator right it's a it's a factory it's a templated templated factory that makes a bunch of functions so so i'm making i guess i'm rolling my own uh interface generator okay so here we're going to do a lookup so uh, i need to capture that indexers right two trophies thank you tim Thank you for the trophies. I'll treasure them always. Super lonely where you are. What's what's going on in Dorn? Are you like snowed in? Stuck at home? I know some people are. Judge Judy is married, so you don't even have to a chance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let me. You guys are distracting me. No snow there, but there's no other people. Lose, lose. Sorry. Let's see. It's going to be a const auto indexer. Ent indexers entry is indexers find. It's, it's an arrow. It's a shared find. field name right if indexers entry is indexers end then we then we return nil otherwise we are going to actually i'm, I'm gonna have to give the indexers the lua because they're gonna have to push their their thing let me go to this indexers we have to give them the lua state as well So it will be indexers entry dot second. It's a function that takes Lua and the. Now I forget. What was it that it took? Component. Right, exactly. So it is self component, right? Let me build that, make sure that works. Yeah, okay. Actually, I wonder if it's let me let me screw something up here. I wonder if it's it's working because it's not compiling the it's not using the template. Okay, yeah, I got a problem. I need to actually make a template instance to, to see if I have any errors. So let me do that. Uh, let's do it with hero. So no friends here. You have friends. The the friends are all in this channel, Endorn. So collective hug for Endurn. We're your friends, at least. Yep, all your all your uh, real life friends are 150 kilometers from you. You know that happens whenever you go on a trip, anyway. So it's a temporary thing, right? Okay, I need some indexer. Actually, I need um, these four things. Let me copy them. Then I will return to where I was, and we I'll just put them here. So I need a collection wrapper name after this. So that is heroes, and then the component wrapper name. Let's put it on the same line. It's a safe space, right? Now I need a map of indexers. So I'm going to use an initializer list for that. Actually, let's just leave them empty. That should at least get past the compiler unless I have errors in the template, which I do. Look at that. Oops. Didn't mean to drag that. Need to get that auto hotkey thing. Uh, not the thing. Auto hotkey script that... Uh, That playing with scissors said Adam had for setting the size of the window, so I don't have to worry about dragging it. Okay, what's the what's the deal? Hey, how's it going, eighty-five filter? 
big wave to you. I'm uh, making an ugly ass template to reduce the boilerplate in making wrappers for adapting my back end prototype game to Lua because I'm making I'm moving all of my prototype systems to Lua. They're gonna look like this instead of where's another where's the system in uh, C plus plus instead of this. Instead of this update function with like an ugly way of iterating, it'll be a nice clean Lua function with a nice clean way to iterate. So that's what I'm doing. I went the Lua route. Yeah, I actually have been planning to use Lua for a while because I've used Lua in a few other projects and I just like it. It's just a nice way to make the logic mutable. So you can change the code while it's running without having to rebuild it. I guess it would be the equivalent of doing this in JavaScript. Okay, see you, Tim. Have a good day. By the way, Leptris, did you know that there is a lurk command? And then there's an unlurk command? <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Resize win. So that's the uh, auto hotkey thing, right? But that was in Adam's thing. I'll copy it anyway. Log notes. That's what I want. So I don't have to mess with resizing that. I'm just looking back at chat at what I missed. Okay. Yeah. Let's look at the errors. What is the compiler trying to tell me? Syntax error. Where? 468. Why? Oh, yeah. Semicolon. Indeed. It got a little further. Impl undeclared identifier. Okay, I think I know that. I know why. That is because it's scoped within components. Here's the trick, though. Can I? Do I have access to that class? I hope I do. Actually, do I even need it? Looks like I don't even use self. Because I'm using the functions directly. So I really could just do the check u data and that's it, right? And not even not even use the return value? I could just delete that. Oh let's see. Let's see if I can use that structure. Cannot access private structure. Okay, fine. Then we won't use it. <laughs> we will just use the check to make sure it's the correct kind of object, but otherwise we're going to cast the return value to void because we don't need it. We're not using itself at all. Okay, here, that's a different error. Let's see what that is. Second is not a member of the iterator. Oh, because why is that? Oh, um, you have to dereference the iterator. Yes, exactly. And then that's a semicolon problem. I just know it. It gets, gets further. Another semicolon problem? Fixed. Ooh, it worked. Except for I have a to-do here. Let's fill that in. So it's the same kind of thing, right? I'm going to look at it in my new indexers. So I need the new indexers. New indexers. We find the field name. If we can't find it, actually we don't need to do anything. It's only if we do find it, we use it. Right? And then we're done. Out, dent, that, and we're done. Okay. Okay, there's one more thing I need to do. I need I want to do this crud in that um template. Templated function factory, I should say. Yeah, so that's the complete crud. And let's just I guess we just put it here, right? Uh Actually I guess I don't even need to put it in the table. Because I'm just going to be um giving addresses to them directly.
So let's, um, do I want to keep this? Say, collection component. This is collection wrapper name. Here. And the other one is component wrapper name. And then instead of that, it's just uh, component index. No, collection index. And that's collection len. And this is collection iterate. This is component index. And that's component new, new, new index. Okay. I think this will work because we're, are we given Lua? We are not. I need to pass in the Lua, don't I? Lua state Lua. Let's make that the second argument. No, no, no. I don't know. Does I don't know. We need to give it though. So here. Actually, where do we get the Lua in the first place? Okay, it's in link Lua, so we should probably do it there instead of this constructor. So I'm gonna move this down to here. And I think there's going to be more changes there. Yeah, because of this. Okay. Well, actually, that makes sense to me. Why we have... Um, yeah, okay, it makes sense. So here is this. Build component types map. You're sharing it properly like, okay. I think you already did the other day, and I have that in my notebook somewhere else. Yeah, it looks familiar. That, that's the same thing Adam uses, right? I think I already have that somewhere else, but thank you. All right, so I don't need impl, right? Because we're inside of imp. Oh, no, I do need impl. Why does this have a problem? Relative to a specific... Oh, is link Lua a static? Declaration. Yeah, it's static. Okay. That's going to be a problem, isn't it? Actually, it won't because it, it gets a self. It recovers a self. Okay. I just can't do it from Link Lua, right? Let me think about this. I need Lua. Lua is not given to the constructor, but I have this static. We only do this once for the whole class. So I need another one to. Um... Well, actually, when is this called? Adams is far more complex. Okay. Yeah, we don't have access to the components here. So I need to make another function. This links the class with the interpreter and another one to, which is not static, which is, um, I guess it'll be building the component type map. Build component type map given the Lua. This method is called to to build the component type map. Well, which is which which holds all components of all types 
along with Lua wrappers. Along with uh, both Lua wrappers and... It's actually going to be an end up all the... Let's just say Lua wrappers. All right, so this function now is going to... We're going to do this stuff. Components. So we don't need that comment. We're moving this down here. <laughs> Still doesn't like that. Why not? Oh, because I had to add Lua, right? To add Lua here. And that is, um, yeah, like that. Cool. All right, so I just need to call this from the right place. That would be in the game, I think. Not there. It's when we start the new game. Where do we start a new game? Load systems. Here we go. I actually don't need to do that. It's... Oh, do I? How do I access the, what, the, the components now? Yeah, I don't need to do it because it's passing as an argument. Instead, here's a nice place. Okay, we're going to parse it here. After we parse it, it's probably the best place, right? To, um... No, we can do it here. I see we're going back to using this method prefix for every... Oh, nope. I was just being lazy. Sorry. Sorry, playing with scissors. We're trying to, I'm trying to get into this habit of using imperative. Build a component type map. There we go. Is that better? Am I redeemed? I didn't actually... Is it, I'm kind of getting lax not documenting these because this is a prototype. But um, this was... Old habits die, die slowly, right? All right. I don't think I need to do this because I'm passing it in every time. So, actually, let me let me make sure. Yeah, I'm doing it there. So I don't need to do this. We'll just we'll just repurpose this. Uh, build the components. Actually, it's load systems. It doesn't really belong here either. Where is load systems called? There. Okay. Yeah, let's let's make this another function called build component types. And we call components dot build component type map Lua. And we call that from wherever this is called. There we go. Hey there, CM Griffin. Shout out to CM Griffin. I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, he's another Twitch streamer who does awesome things here. Variety of things. You should watch him. What non-real food have you had? Playing with scissors. 48 hours? What are you subsisting on? The blood of your enemies? Oh. So you're, um, you're on some kind of extreme diet? Sunflower seeds and bread-like stuff. Ah. Interesting. Build. Yes. All right. So does this build? Does build build? Build does not build. Feels bad, man. What did I do wrong? What the heck? Push C close. Oh, I can't use a function as a Lua C function? Uh-oh. That's going to be an issue, isn't it? I might have to use threaded C macros for this. Okay. Yes. Because they have captures, right? Can't use a newfangled C++ function as a old fangled Lewis C function, but 
I can do some macro magic to make this work, right? Let me think about how I would do this. A template can't make a static function, can it? Maybe we can. Let me try. Can we make a templated static function? I really need just a forwarder. So... Let me just try with one of these. So the collection index. Let's make a... Let's try to make a templated forwarder. Right up here. Type name. Actually, I don't know what I need. It's going to end up calling... Uh, let's make a marker there. It's going to end up calling... Oh, I guess I can just make the template argument by the function. So like this, uh, collection index. Like that. Actually, I don't know if I can do that. Probably can't. <laughs> I don't recommend starving for 40 days playing with scissors. <laughs> Somehow I have to turn that into a static C function. The only way I know how to do it is to do is to make ugly macros. So it'd be something like uh, pound define make collection index thunk, for lack of a better word, and it would be given what? A name or type, type name, and what else does it need? I don't think it needs anything else. Ugly macro stuff. So I need to store, it's going to be static int. Uh, what am I calling this? Type. Collection index, and it's given. I thought that's how you glue two symbols together. Am I wrong? I think it's just the um, IntelliSense is confused, and I don't blame it. Ugly macros can be confusing, so that is this. And we'll just have it call some, it has to, it's static, so it has to call some global. Actually, this, it doesn't need to be declared static. It just needs to be static. I mean, um, a free function, which means I have to have storage for it. So we'll have type so this. is type collection index. I'll call the other one thunk. Thunk. Lua. All right, let's try that. So then I would just make one. Where I'm making the others nearby, it's not too far away. So here's where I need it, right? Yeah, so actually, I guess this is where we're going to do it. So the first type is what? Oh, I'm only, it was only I was only playing around with health, right? Where was that? No, it was hero. I did hero first. Need a hero. Hero. 
All right. Actually, what is it? What problem does it have now? Expected a semicolon. Where? Oh, right there. Okay. Why is it not like this? Closing brace of template definition not found. Why? I don't know. So instead of this, we're going to use the thunk. I think. I think I thunk. Oh, you know what? It's going to have to be passed in. Well, this is going to be ugly as sin. <sighs> okay. We can do this. <laughs> so it will be um, a Lua C function. That is a pointer to a function, right? Yes. Components a collection index. Right? So we'll just pass we'll just pass it. Collection index. Oh, this is backwards. Anyway, um Yeah, this isn't gonna work. Oh no, it'll work. It'll work. Um and I don't need to pass it in, do I? I do not. Actually, I will do. I will need to do this. Oh, I'm in. I'm in for trouble here. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing something you should never try at home. Trying to mix macros with C plus plus lambdas and templates all at the same time. <sighs> I just dug myself a hole and I'm not sure how to get out of it. So the problem is that I need to give a function to Lua, a C function, and it's telling me I can't pass in C++ function objects as C functions. So I was going to try to hack that in with a macro to do it. Actually, it'll still work, right? I just have to... Um, I have to pass two things, the the thunk and the and then the address of where to store the function. So that's this is going to be truly ugly. The address of that is the collection index, right? And then the and um actually I already had storage for it. But it's in in a map, right? So it does need to be given an address. Or does it? Actually, I don't think it does. I am just using Lua. Just plain old vanilla Lua. Is this yet another library? Well, it's it I'm trying to make a template function factory to make the bindings that I need. And yeah. I just need to think about what am I doing? Yeah, then, okay, so I don't need to actually store them at all in, uh, so this doesn't actually need to store it. I can remove that. Let's just do this one at a time. Instead, I just store it in the provided storage. And then down here, I will call the thunk. So then in addition, to um, calling this, I also have to make the thunk, which I did right there. 
right? And then when I use the template, I use the thunk. So that is down here, right? Where did I put it in the list? Too many bookmarks. Bookmark here. After the wrapper names and before the maps. Okay. Right here. So it's hero collection index and hero collection index thunk. Let's see. If, if that works, then I'll have to do that for all of them. Collection index is not a member of component type. That's on 480. Oh, I messed up something here. This was Len, right? Yeah, I messed this up. That should have gone there. And this was Len. So ideally, you would say something like expose this component and Lua has access to an iterator. There are, it's an iterator and individual elements of the uh, list. So all this is wrapping a, uh, how do I show it? Where do I, where is it? Hold on, just a second. It's, we're wrapping this. It's a, a shared vector of um, component types. And this, so this template is instantiated for every kind of component. And this, this is why I'm doing it in a template, because I want to ha have wrappers for all, actually it's not just wrappers, but the storage, and um, basic operations on 11 different kinds of components. So that's what this function factory does. It's just now I'm adding the um, Lua wrapper, it's generating the Lua wrappers as well, which is this stuff. These are the Lua wrappers. And um, because Lua needs actual C functions, we're having to store the function object and then use a thunk for lack of a better term, to give to Lua. So Lua will call the thunk, which is really just a um, static function that generated with an ugly macro, which calls the C++ function, which is constructed by the function factory. And it's, yeah, there's got to be a way to make this cleaner. But for now, let's just make it work. So I need... Four more. The push is not given to Lua, right? It's where these errors are that I have to clean up. Yeah, there's four more. I need to make four more kinds of thunks and stuff. So I can actually make it two, level mac two levels of macro, right? So this is really making collection index. Yeah, thunk. Why not? So the same thing for len. Actually, they're all the same, right? So three more. Iterate. And then component index. and component new index. All right, and then I can um, make another macro, which called make thunks type is just invoking the other four or five, right? Collection index, collection len, collection iterate, component index, component new index. Right, and then I can just say make thunks. And I can actually do, I can get this out of the way right now, right? I can make thunks for all of my components. Collider, generator, health, 
hero input monster pickup position reward tile and weapon one more copy there we go and then I just need oh again this has to be duplicated four more times this is collection len collection iterate component index and component new index that's as ugly that's ugly good thing we're only calling it once per game <laughs> all right so this just becomes collection len and then this is collection iterate and then com component index and component new index and then collection len thunk collection iterate thunk component index thunk actually i could probably put all of those thunks together in one structure right rather than passing them individually. I could put all that into one structure that make thunks generates, right? Who doesn't like this? I think that's a stale error. Let me build to make sure. Yeah, that was stale. Here, I just haven't filled in all these things. Yeah, I can make a macro that fills that in, right? No, oh, thanks for the follow. Macros are evil. Don't do this at home. <laughs> Pass thunks type. So that will be a uh, type. It's all of these, basically. Collection index type collection index thunk, and then repeat that four more times with that one being last. So it's collection len, collection iterate, component index, and component new index. All right, so now I can call, just call pass thunks down here. Pass thunks hero. It didn't like it. Type collection index is undefined. And that is that just stale? No, it just really doesn't like that. Type. Oh, oh, hold on. I screwed that up, didn't I? That should be lowercase type. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, getting there. It doesn't like the commas. Too many commas. And we're missing something. That should have worked. I didn't like that. Must return a value. Oh, right, they don't return values. Um, yes, this should all be return in front. Oh, look at that. It, it compiled. <laughs> okay, so now I only really have two places I have to worry about if I add a component. I have to make the thunks, and then I have to make the um, map entry. And we can actually, let's clean that up a little bit. If I r remove that last comma, then I can put that comma back in there and it looks nicer. Yeah. Okay, and there was one more thing. I wanted to put in the logic for, hero needed logic, right? For this, for, no, hero didn't. Where was it? Hero didn't have, Oh, hero had score. Okay, we need score. 
Right, so I wanted to pull that out and put it in the map we're making here. So score, and then the um, function to call, which is, we don't need to capture anything, and we're given some stuff. <sighs> what are we given? We are given Lewis state and component. So that is here. And the component is hero. I guess I can do that, right? Makes it a little bit cleaner, cleaner looking. And so here's where um, I wanted to move that push integer. And it is component score. There we go. So yeah, there'll have to be one of these and then one of these for every kind of component I make. I should try to co-locate those, shouldn't I? So that if it's down here, I can just put that here and then they're reasonably close together. No constructor could take the source type. Overload resolution was ambiguous. Oh, uh, is it because it's returning the wrong thing? Void. Oh, shared pointer. Uh, okay, yeah. So here I have to make this shared. So standard make shared. Oh, it's going to look ugly unless I give it a type, right? You yeah, let's make it. Let's make some types. So using a little template type name t. Can you do using? Can you do it? Can you do this? Using this is called. I don't want to give it. I want to give that a name. Indexers. Indexers. And then this whole thing. I want to be able to do that. I don't think it's going to let me do that. Actually, maybe it will. No. Template type T using. Okay. Thank you, Vader, hun. See, this is the, the part of C11 syntax I don't quite know yet. So you're saying the template T goes in front. Got it. That was close. Doesn't like it, though. Or is that a compile? Is that a stale thing? Okay, it, it did like it. So now I can just abbreviate this to be indexer. T, right? Oh, right, because I haven't fully made that. This should be indexers hero. Right? Or do I, I need to do that and then that? Does not take one argument. It doesn't? But it did. Or is it complaining about this one? No, it's complaining about this one. <sighs> I thought make share did take one argument.
Okay, what if I remove this? Make sure we'll call your constructor past the argument the same way you would for the constructor. That's okay. So, oh, I see what you're saying. So I just remove um, that, right? Yes. Thank you. This is complex stuff. Oh, no, it didn't like it. It doesn't like that uh, initializer list. Oh, is it because I need to give it, I need to tell it it's an initializer list? No. Initializer list is unexpected in that context. And then this, what, what problem does it have with that? Make sure as a function, I'll always use that. Okay, so I want to pass an initializer list to the constructor. So I thought I, I thought this is the way to do it. But it doesn't like that. What if I do... Make shared... Let me look up make shared. What exactly does it want? Parameter list for the constructor. Oh, it doesn't take an initializer list. So can I so I, I can just do it the old school way. Right? And then um new Indexers. Okay, just do it that way for now. Your battery's low and it's getting dark. Yeah, our rip opportunity. I saw that in the news this morning. Opportunity's dead after what, 14, 15 years on Mars? Making shared. Make sure it has some performance benefit. Yeah, but uh, I couldn't get it to work. <laughs> what well, this will just uh, end up copying the pointer, right? So it should be fine. 2013, that would be four, four, 15 and a half years. Yeah. All right, so this is good. And... That's all that heroes did, right? So I can remove... I should be able to remove this now. Because the function factory does that for me. And... Let me look at this for a, se for a second. Yep, I'll have to rewrite that in a minute. Should I test this for now? See if this, see if this works. So the only thing I'm really building is hero. I'm not building the other component types. What, did I build them before somewhere else? I did, and they were all commented out. Okay, so I'll need that. I'll need to do it. I'll need it to do it for them all. I guess we'll just do it generically. So this can be def. No, that's that's fine. All right, so let's do them in order. So collider, generator, health, and those go above. All right, one at a time here. So that's Lua, health, health, pass thunks, health, 
And then we'll use um, no indexer stuff yet. Right. And then the same thing with a generator. Hey there, Tua Bud. How's it going? Yeah, that rover only, uh, Opportunity rover only was expected to run 90 days. Yeah, they got a lot of overtime out of that thing, didn't they? What am I working on today? Today, I'm, uh, taking this prototype game, this lovely prototype game that you see here, and taking all the game logic and putting it into Lua, and I'm trying to do it without doing a lot of copy-paste. So I'm using macros and templates to generate a lot of the wrapper code to go between C++ and Lua right now. But yeah, this proto I'm, I'm doing this in a prototype game so that I can test out to see how this goes. And if it works well enough, I'll do it in my real game. Yeah, I liked the picture in the newspaper this morning with Opportunity. They showed a picture of it looking back at its tracks. That was pretty cool. So, colliders. Collider. Collider. Okay. How are we doing, compiler? We doing okay? Yep, doing okay. Just need these ones to go. All right. So this is the maximum, um, this is the minimum amount of boilerplate that I'll end up doing. Actually, I could default those, right? I could default those. You know what I could also do is um, make a macro for that. So that is declare. Uh, th declare thunk parameters. So that is this kind of a thing. Actually, th so there's a... Yes, so it's like this. Um... Actually, there's no type, right? Actually, this won't change, so I don't need to. I don't really care. I'm learning making macros and templates for things which do change. Oh, I could I could go ahead and do the in, new indexers while I'm at it, right? Actually, is new indexers the same as indexers? Yeah. So let's make this a different name. I don't need that then. So we'll call this one. Hold on a second. You looked up make share with an int list for you. You just have to be explicit. Oh, okay. Let me try that in a second. Thank you for that, Vader Hunt. Let's call this one what? It is a property map. Lua property map. So I can do that here and shorten that up a bit. Mm. Undeclared identifier. Oh, right. All right, so you're saying I have to be explicit. So make shared. And then I have to say initialize your list of type. Hero, no, indexers hero, right? No, Lua property map hero. And then I can do that, right? It's the same number of lines though. <laughs> oh, I did it wrong.
Yeah, I'm I'm facing the dark side, the CD underbelly of C++ right now. Value type. I had a feeling it was going to be something like that. Yeah, but is that better than just calling the const you're saying that this oh, hold on. Make component type no matching overload. Oh, that's when it gets down there. So this works, but is that any better than doing new? That actually looks like it's more typing than this. Well. Okay, you're saying that this is less performant, but I actually think that that's easier to read. I hope you don't mind if I go with that. Performance-wise, it's better. How how much better, though? <laughs> how much am I sacrificing to make it more re a little bit more readable? Versus, um, oh, I already lost it. So this is the same number of characters, but this one became a little bit more, it became standard initializer list, uh, that value type. Okay, well, okay. It's not that, it's not too much, it's not too much worse, right? So make shared it is. And then this was um, standard initializer list of that value type. I guess it's not it's not too much worse. Too bad we have to be explicit, right? One D reference, a copy, and a destructor of a shared pointer. That's really not that much, right? Initializer lists are evil, but doesn't it end up just moving? These are pretty lightweight anyway. This ends up just being a pointer to a a uh, class. No, it's an object that holds onto a pointer with a reference count or something weird like that, right? So it's actually not that heavy. And I thought that they were just moved anyway. Initializer lists you you move the values. These are all R values, right? They would when they just be moved into the map. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know if an initializer list constructor moves its arguments in or if it copies them. You can't move them out even though they are R values. So it will end up me making a copy. Oh well. So maybe a better thing to be, would be to before we um, call this function factory we would make we build this map with um in places instead of initializer list i don't i don't want to thrash this too much let me just move on i'll just use this for now oh and i wanted to make those defaulted right let's make these defaulted interesting that i can do that i guess shared pointer has it's actually not doing the right thing. It'll end up with a null pointer, right? So I really do want it to make make an empty one. Let's do that. So the default will be to make an empty one. And that's got to be a T. There we go. So all of these that I don't really care about, especially with the new indexes I don't care about. I can just remove all of that. And that, um, that I have to have because that's non-default. Alright, just to get this to compile and run. Monsters. M Monster. Pick up. Pick up. Synthesized const array. So it really is just doing a copy. Yeah, that's that's cool. I, I, I want to learn the pros and cons, but I don't want to get too sidetracked, if that makes sense. I want to... Oh, whoa, keyboard fail there. What happens when you're one key off?
So this this is all for a good cause. It's if I allow me to add a component just by adding one of these and one of these and not change anything else. You know what's cool is reward is all in the left hand. Lua. Tiles. Tile. Pestunks tile. And then we need uh, two. Oh, yeah, this is the wrong thing to do anyway, right? We really should be doing that. here and then weapon build it ship it food's almost ready what kind of food oh is this your after your starvation your first meal compiler error error Compiler error. All right, so this needed the uh, two defaults, right? Spaghetti, can I have some? What did I do now? 7.30, no, what, what's this problem? Did I do this wrong? Oh, I did do it wrong. Wrong type there. I probably did it wrong in the other places too. That was hero. This was tile. Yep. Oh, I think it might work this time. Yay. Now am I brave enough to run this damn thing? I don't want that anymore. And I don't want that. Actually, I need to I need to uh, fill in the uh, health index. Where was it? This thing. I need HP. Otherwise, the um, and I need I need that too. I need these. I need this code here. Otherwise, the the hunger system will break because the hunger system is already in Lua and it needs those. So that is in health. So that's here. We're going to put that. That is the getter, and that is the setter. Right, so instead of these, we'll do these. And that, this, it goes here, or... HP, and that is not a hero, it's a health. HP's setter looks like this. That is now a component for that. There we go. It doesn't look too bad. Okay, what to do? Do I have too many parameters? Yeah, too many. Okay. I should be able to just delete all these now. Because these all should be generated by the, the function factory. Oh, I haven't done position X and Y. Do I need those? I don't think I need them yet. I'll, let me just delete all of these. This should be good, right? <laughs> oh, except for these are broken now. Okay. Yeah, let me let me um bring resurrect those. I need push health and push position. I need those to stick around for a little bit. 
Was it, did, I, did I push hero? No. I need push health, though. And I need push position. Just for a little bit until I up, update those other... Update the collection glue. So this becomes... Um, Oh, that's that's a that's a hidden structure now, isn't it? But I could cheat. I could cheat by actually making that exact structure. C will, C doesn't know. I don't need push hero. C doesn't know that I can do this, right? So it's not really that structure, but it's exactly the same composition, so it should work, right? And that is script position. Component. Well, I can call it the same thing. Why not? And through the magic of the uh, name of the meta table, it'll actually, it'll actually work. All right. Am I brave enough to try this out? Syntax extravagance. It's going to crash and burn horribly, isn't it? It's actually working. Look at that. My health is ticking away when I'm not being hit. So that worked. So now I can pr plug in the other systems, right? And then stash away those macros in a deep, dark pit and never look at them again, right? Probably put them in a header file called do not ever, ever open up this header file dot h. I actually am impressed that that worked the first time. In fact, I'm kind of scared. I wonder if I can uh, test this by changing something. I know what I'll do. I'll hack the HP thing so that we cannot set it. We will just... Actually, let's... Let's, if I do that, it will um, subtract two health, right? I'm just going to do this as a sanity check. Sanity checking, here we go. Oh, look at that, it worked. Okay, so it really is going through that logic. Nice. Yeah, it is terrifying. I always think that, like, it's running an old copy from before I made all my changes, or... Something like that, right? So I always just, uh, you know, mess around with the code to make sure I really am running what I think I'm running. Because, yeah, that's happened to me before. It works right away, and it's because it's not actually running the latest code. It's running, like, one iteration before, and I don't find out for, for until I actually change something, not refactor, but actually change it, and it, it doesn't change. I'm like, what the hell? And then you, and then you discover that it didn't, your whole refactoring didn't work, and you thought you were running it, and you weren't. I'm going to leave this boilerplate alone, and we just need to update this, so... Where is it? It was at the push uh, health stuff, right? This. So we're going to get rid of these and see what I have to do. Right, so the get entity component of type is needs to be changed. What about this other stuff? Okay. Um what does this do? Oh it calls kill. I still have that function, right? Okay, but I what I did I actually did remove I don't need some of these anymore, right? That that one, for example, it's not actually used anymore. It's um there's a thunk for it instead. So is that is that okay to remove them? I think so because these are only going to be called from Lua. It's if some of my uh, C++ is going to call some of the other C++ directly. Like the, I need I need the push that needs that I need to keep, and I think I need that get Lua index as well. Yes, I needed that. I need get Lua index and I needed push, but I don't think I need these. I don't even think they're set anymore, right? 
Oh, right. Okay, that's that's just these that I need to rewrite. Okay, so I think what I need to do is have another map. No, I already have a map. But the type, I need to map type names to types is what I need, right? Okay, I can do, I can just replace this f for now, right? I can call this dot push little index. But it, it's just one other place where if I add a component, I'll have to, um, there's no self. No, there is a self. Why is this? Oh, that's stale. Um, this is another place where if I add a new component type, I have to add more code. And this is boilerplate, so I would like to make that part of the te templated function factory. So that goes here, but it's position, right? Position. So that'll work for now. Verify. Never trust that it works. Test it. Cool. Still working. So... I guess I just want a map, right? From a uh, type name to... Yeah, it's all the same. From type name to type enum. So, I can include that, right? No, and it has to be here. So, string to type. Component type names. And then, um, that we can put in here, right? I know, this is returning one. I guess we'll just put it here. Collider equals type collider. Generator is generator. Health is health. Hero is hero. Input is input. Monster is monster. Pickup is pickup. Actually, I wonder if I can move this in to this somehow. This is what, a template, a free template? But if, if I made it a member template of Impul, then it could do this assignment and this at the same time. Let me try that. So instead of doing all this here, do it one place in here. Why did it go there? Oh, shoot. There. Okay, in here. And I guess we can do it first, right? And this will be... Okay, I need to add, I need to add the, um, the actual name here. Because I don't have that anywhere else, right? I have the wrapper name. I have the component wrapper name, but it's not capitalized. Actually, I could reuse that. And just from the scripts here, I could make it... Um, yeah, okay, let's leverage. Let's pull that. I'll use component wrapper name. Is the type. I just need to remember here to make them lowercase. To match. Alright, so... And then this whole template moves into the class, the impul class. So take it out of there and paste it here somewhere. 
Here. Well... Yeah, let's put it here. And then indent. <laughs> indent. And then uh, I can do what this what old code was doing, which is do the assignment at the end. Uh, right up here, up here. So instead of returning it, it would just assign it. And we can do a move there. Okay, and then we don't need to return anything. Void. And then in front of all these, okay, we just collapse these now. So yeah, all of this just goes away. Do, 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 do. Redundant, redundant work. I love it. It is so fun. I love just doing the same thing 10 times. 11, actually. All right, so the last thing... Actually, no, that was it, right? It stores it in the map. Undeclared identifier. Lua property map. Probably here, right? No? Something just fell. <laughs> Why is this a problem? I don't know. The real first error is on line 182. Oh, because that is declared outside, right? Why can't I use that? Oh, it's declared later. So we need to declare it earlier. So up here... Try now. Try this level now. Okay, cool. Now I, I can actually use it here. I can say... Component type names entry const auto is component type names find type name. If component type names entry is equal to component type names end, then we need to push the nil, right? Else we get to call it. Actually, it's just this. And we use uh, component, so const auto type is that arrow second, and then type replaces this. Oh, it can't be static, though. Is that a problem? It is a problem. Oh, no, we have self. Right, it's self arrow. Recover our context from Lua. Yay! Let's try it out. Do it. It crashed. <laughs> All right, let's run it in the debugger. See what I, what did I mess up? Okay, here it is. And then I can, I reload. I can connect. There's the error there. Wait a minute, is impl null? No? What's the error? Bad function call. Really? Oh, that's not the context we were in. What context were we in? Here we were.
Wait a minute. Why didn't that work? Oh, wait, there's only two types? Collider and weapon? How come there's only two types? Hold on, I think I messed something up. So where is that filled? Right, oh, type, oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm just dumb. So that is type. I was stupid. Okay, let's try it again. Yay, it's working. We're able to play. Okay. So let me see. Is there any more work I need to do other than, or are we ready to port the rest of the systems over? I guess I could connect. Now it's really easy to connect up the component types, right? I just fill in the uh, properties here. Anything else I can clean up here, though? Actually, what is... Oh, right, that's... Yeah, okay, never mind. Every component has entity ID, so we handle that property directly. Okay, so that is good. That's good. Okay, this I can get rid of now, right? Oh, that was copied from before in case I needed to keep it. And yes, we're just going to keep that. Same thing here, right? Oh, no, here I can... Why do I have heroes indexable from components? Oh, right, yeah, here we can do some work. So I can find... What is this doing? Oh, this is creating the new collection. So this is so this is another function we can have that we need to have. Then let's get rid of this boilerplate here. Right, so I think I yeah, I need this. So this would be called what a collection constructor. And what does it need? It just needs Lua, doesn't it? Okay. Actually, you know what? All it, all it does is use the same meta table, so I don't need anything new. I can just do the same kind of search I did before here. Oh, but I need to do it by uh, by plural name. Yeah, okay, we can do it by plural name. So it's, it's uh, okay, yeah, it's another map. So it's a collection type. Find field name. If, if we can't find it, we do the default index operation. Otherwise, we make a new one. We make a we make a wrapper. So this is collection wrapper, and we use the same name. So that's field name for the meta table name. Who doesn't like that? Oh, because it's a C plus plus string. And okay, I need to make that one. So that is uh, another map collection type names. Right? And then we'll have our handy dandy little templated function factory set that as well. The collection type names and here we use the collection wrapper name.
Actually, it doesn't even need to be a map, does it? It can just be a set. Why store the type when we don't need it? So just make it a set. No type. I don't think anything else changes. We just see if it's in the set. Oh, wait a minute. It does... The, it changes where we set it, right? Instead of doing the assignment, we'd say insert that. It returns something that we don't need. There we go. All right. One more round of testing. Everything's still working. Great. <laughs> okay. Collapse that ugly guy. All of these are fine. Right. Cool. Okay. So that's all basically boilerplate for all of the components. And then here, here's the part we would have to add a new section. We would have to add a thunks, and we have to add a call to make component type if we add a new type of component, but that's all we need to do. Everything else is fixed boilerplate, right? Yeah. I like it. Let's check it in. Back end. Here we go. Right, that changed necessarily. Yes, that moved down to there. Added that, and then here's the bulk of our work in this file. Okay. So refactoring. Move all Lua wrapper generation into a combination of a macro and a call to the templated function factory. And this is all component Lua generation. Components. All right, refactoring complete. In fact, I can go and mark this off of my list, which I have uh, in Trello. Where's my Trello? Here's my Trello. You guys want to see my Trello? It's there. I'm actually doing that right now. That, that's what I did between streams, so I'm done with that. All right, so I have integrated component. Oh, okay, no, I'm not completely done yet. To make myself feel better, let me add an item before that last, those last two and say... Use macros template, use macros and templated function factory to generate all Lua wrapper, wrappers for components. Exactly, that's what I want to say. I just did that, so ta-da! Now integrate components with Lua, all I really need to do is hook up the rest of the components. Let's go from the top, shall we? And let's make... Let's be prepared to, with that in the clipboard. So Collider. Collider has a mask. And we're not going to be changing Collider masks, so I only really need a getter. Look how easy that was. Oh, except for that needs to be Collider. Syntax error. Yeah, indeed. Indeed syntax error. All right. That's it for Collider. Generator. I don't think Generator had anything. That's Generation. Generator. Spawn chance. Okay, do we need that? I might as well. 
Actually, even for the collider, maybe we maybe I just want to fill it in fill in the setters right now. So that would be here. And it's an integer. Great. Okay. So generator had uh, generation. Already lost it from the buffers. Spawn chance. Yes. Spawn chance. Spawn chance, which is a double. So a double is check number. Convert to double. Double to integer, okay, right, yeah, push number. I suppose we should do the correct thing here, which is convert to Lua number, even though they happen to be convertible without a warning. And the same thing here, right? All right. Next component, health. We're already done with health, right? Just has HP. Only this could be maybe cleaned up a little bit. Sounds good to me. Hero. Has score and potions. Okay, we already had score. Let's make score settable. And that is an int, right? Yep. So that's a check integer. And that should be Lua integer. Okay, so we have score and we have po potions. Come on. All right. Input. Input is a little different. I don't want the scripts to be changing fire or move, do I? Actually, no, they, they do. Okay, so this is a little bit more involved because there's a bunch more properties. But nothing we can't handle, right? Whoops. Nothing too bad. Why does this say input collider? I think I messed up there. This should say inputs. Did I mess up anywhere else? Monster, pickup, position, no. It was just that one place I messed up, right? That was hero, health, generator, collider. Okay, yeah, it was just input I screwed up. Does anyone know how the animations in HTML are called? How to move a div from one place to another? Um, some of that's in CSS, right? And hold on, why is this all open? There was uh, something that I, that comes with the default CSS I noticed, and it was um, keyframes. I think that's one way to do animation. But um, so look up keyframes in CSS. That's to do um, if you if you're doing like movement in CSS. For HTML, I would imagine. I would imagine it's just it's it's all done in CSS, right? This HTML is static. But yeah, I don't really know. I don't. I'd have to look this up myself. I don't. I've never done it myself. I just use this is boilerplate that comes with the React app to to do a spinning logo. Yeah, yeah I think it's all CSS, right? 
Yeah. I want to learn more of that stuff, by the way. It, I should have that on my list somewhere of things to learn. Okay, so input. Fire. And fire is a character. Is there a char push character? There's push string. Yeah, I guess we can do push string. We have to, um, what, make a pointer to it? We have to make a little bit of a string. So we, we'll, we'll do is this. Const string fire as string. And then give it to it. That's a stale, stale error. Okay, and then these are booleans. Oh, right. Booleans were special, right? It's push boolean. And that took like an int. Right, so what we do is we say... It's either one or zero. Okay, now for this, I will do a uh, string. Where is that done exactly? Check string, yes. That's a library call. So fire is a string. I think we'll just take the first character off of it. That's three. So fire will be if fire empty component fire equals zero else or do we want to have it like nil? No, I'll just keep it as a string. Okay, and then fire release. That is check boolean, I think. Is it L? Check boolean? Huh. Okay, I don't remember how I did this. Rather than looking it up, I'm just going to cheat and look at the last project I did this in. Where I had a boolean. So where would that be? Not there. Script host. Probably here. No? Component. Okay, there's push boolean. Ah, here we go. It's check. It has to be something. It has to be convertible to boolean. Got it. Okay, I don't need this one. So here, check any three, and then that is converting it to boolean. If it's not zero, it's true. There we go. What error do I have now? Is this is the character not convertible to string? <laughs> Ambiguous. Really, you can't convert a character to a string? I think you can if you give it a number, right? String. Uh, basic string, right? Right, a count and then a character. So if I say uh, one comma. Now it's happy, okay. Other things in input are fire this tick. actually thought of another optimization I can make. 
a lot of these things are like the same. Only the only thing different here is the uh, the type of the component and the field we're storing it in and the string. So I could make another template that generates a function or generate actually you could generate that type exactly. I'll think about that. <laughs> it can make this code even more succinct. Move we have move and then two more booleans. So I'm just gonna take this and duplicate it. Call that one move. Move released. Just again move. And move this tick. Yeah, weapon in flight now. Is a boolean. And then there's an integer cooldown. Move cooldown. And use potion boolean. All right, and then I need to replicate um, those down here, right? So this fire becomes move. And then weapon in flight. Use potion and move cooldown. Move cooldown, changing an int. One of these guys. All right. Make sure it builds. No, it doesn't build. Move cooldown. Oh, right, it says hero. All right, so where, how many times did I say hero? Just once? And here, twice. Yeah, that's, that's the most elaborate component. Next we have monster. Monster actually doesn't have anything in it. So he, he's easy. Pickup has an enum. Okay, this one's gonna be interesting. Let me take from this one where it's a string. Comma. And then the other side of it. I guess that's this one. Type, okay. All right, so first we get it as a string. No, we don't do that, we can't do that. I have to do a switch, don't I? And this is not an input, it is a pickup. The switch on component type, and then these are the types, right? Food, potion, exit, treasure, and then maybe we'll have one for, if we don't know what it is. All right, default. So we're going to make a type as a string, right? And it's not const because we need to set it. And thanks for the follow, Tartico. Here's where it would be kind of cool if C++ had like a um, take an enum value and turn it into a string. I know that that's in C sharp. Right, you, or you can annotate values to turn them into strings, because that's what I want, and then we'll just do that. And then the opposite is we're going to have to do a bunch of if-elses, right? Uh, get the type if type is food, 
component type. This should be pickup. There we go. And one more. Lua looks like C++. Well, this is the C++ wrappers. The Lua looks like this. It looks distinctly different in that there are no brackets. There are no semicolons. The indentation is optional. I just do it so I can make it readable. And you can the there are certain kinds of iterator patterns that are that are distinct. Also, in you don't use the um, bang equals for not equals. It's tilde equals. So there are there are a few differences. And this is this is a funny thing in Lua. This the um, pound sign or hashtag or whatever it it returns the length of the table. So this is actually how you add to the table. You take the length and add one and index that. And that is because all indexes or indices are one based in Lua, another one of those peculiarities. Yeah, right now I'm making wrappers for the components in my game so that you, we can access them from the systems which are gonna be in Lua. Type is type food. Actually, I guess that would be pickup type food. Right? Else, and then we have a whole bunch more. And I think if it's none of the above, we will do nothing. So, food. Okay, we, I need to prefix these as well. Like that. Food, potion, treasure, and exit. Something tells me that this won't build. One base is evil? Yeah. It's it's interesting. <laughs> That's for sure. You have to be very careful when um, translating indices back and forth between Lua and C++. Okay, I messed something up here. Oh, here we go. Copy-paste is uh, gnawing at me today. Okay, so let's pick up. Position had just X and Y, right? So let me pick uh, something that had integers, like this one. We'll copy what we had for hero, and we'll reuse it for position. And it's score, instead of score, it's x. And instead of potions, it's y. I love that, mult that search replace in VS Code. Makes it so much quicker to do things. All right, reward. What did I have in reward? Is it just score or something? Score. All right, score. So all of this goes here. Position becomes reward. X becomes score. And we don't need a Y. Ooh, a couple more. Tile and weapon. Okay, this one's a little bit more complicated. It's got a string, two integers, and three booleans. So I think I'll I'll start from input, which had a whole bunch of things, and copy that. All right. Tile. So that replaces down to there. Okay, all the inputs become tiles. Tile, okay. First one is a name, which uh, is kind of like fire, so student name. We don't need it, it's already a string, so we just push the string component name directly. Okay, and there's Z, there's an int. So one of these. Z, and then phase. And then spinning, dirty, and destroyed. So it's just three booleans. So I'll delete all this stuff, copy this three times, and then it's spinning. 
dirty and destroyed. All right. Now the setters. So name is kind of like this one. Only it's a lot simpler. I think we just do this and we're done. All right, and then we'll take the move cooldown and duplicate that a couple times. That's Z and phase. And then spinning, dirty, destroyed. So take a Boolean pattern here. Spinning, dirty, and destroyed. All right, make sure it builds. So good, or so far so good. And the last component is weapon, DXDY owner. Okay. It's just got integers, so I'm going to copy from reward and reuse that one. All right, weapon has DX and DY and owner ID. And it's not reward, is it? It's weapon. I really do love the uh, multi searcher place here. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting one and then I'm hitting control D like four times there. And if you wanted to do everywhere, you just do control shift L. Thanks for the follow. Woda Shenzig. Woda Shenzig. Hope I'm saying that right. It is cold today here. Think about putting on my sweater. All right, so now all the components are hooked up into Lua. Make sure I didn't break anything by running the prototype. So right now the prototype, only one of the systems is in Lua. The rest are still in C++, so it's the health system. You can tell it's working by when I'm moving around here, my health is ticking down every 10 ticks. So I think the, the last goal is to um, move the rest of the systems into Lua. So let me pour, let me check this in. What'd you have for lunch? You, you had spaghetti, right? Can I have some? Do you have any leftover spaghetti? Components. Uh, fill in the uh, rest of the Lua wrappers. Push that upstream. You ate them all. Feels bad, man. Feels hungry, man. All right, anyway. I am done with integrating the components. So the last thing to do is support the systems to Lua. So... What system do I want to port next? Let me start with an easy one. Oh, okay, generator. That looks easy. So there's that's what I want to put into here for generator. End, right? Okay, so it's going to loop through all generators. That's easy for generator in components. Generators do. It does it every tick, so we don't even need the tick. And it finds the position of the generator. So local position equals com. Actually, I can just copy this, right? Get entity component of type position generator dot entity ID. Oh, there was another thing I should have put local on. I'll just fix that now. All right. Now we do a roll between zero and one. And I don't remember how to do this, so I'm going to look it up. How do you do RNG in Lua? There must be a way. Oh, why am I using Google? I have my little document. Documentation program here. Lua random. Math.random. There we go. So pseudo random float with uniform distribution is what I want between 0 and 1. The, oh, so the range M to N. Actually, I don't even need this. So I just need math.random. So we called it roll, right? Local roll equals math dot random. Okay. If roll is less than generator spawn chance. If roll less than generator spawn chance. 
then. I don't like how it et out dents all my ends. So then we make another one from zero to three called D. And um, zero, three. Oh, and it's exclusive, right? But we can round it. I need to integer, right? Is there a round? Round. No, there's no round, but there's a floor, right? Math dot floor. Okay, so I can do. I can add. Add zero point five and floor it, right? Wowie, look who's here. Wowie. Remy, how's it going? About a little wowie that lives in a wowie world all day and night. Everything else he sees is a wowie like him inside and out. That's such a nice story. I am doing okay. Although I'm kind of cold. It's cold and raining here. All right, so I'm porting the systems of my prototype game from C++ to Lua right now. So here's the C++ version. Here's the Lua version. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? So I'm just going to take the C++ and paste it here and then fix it. So ints become locals. Arrows become dots. We get rid of all opening parentheses. These become thens. These become, okay, this, this special one is an else if, right? Or else. And then these become end. And we can't do a plus equals, right? Plus equals is equals x plus. Why did that have a... Oh, I accidentally ate that, parentheses. There we go. If not components is obstacle in the way... Can I do a, a, a bitwise not in Lua? I don't remember. Add monster. Oh, add monster is another function we need. Why do I even need Lua? So, and uh, that's okay. I don't feel like singing, playing with scissors. I uh, am choosing Lua as a way to make the game systems changeable at runtime without rebuilding the backend server. So I just re-upload, or I'll just upload a new Lua script or scripts and tell the backend server to reparse them. And it just um, updates the code on the fly. That's why I'm using Lua. I don't have to use Lua specifically, but I just I want some language that is mutable at runtime without tools, or without too many tools. Like if I I could I could go uh, really I could go to one extreme, which would be it's still in C++, but I actually have a compiler on the back end that compiles it in and you know just in time. But yeah, I'm not that crazy. All right, add monster. I need a function. You know, I kind of feel like capitalizing these two. Hunger. And where did I put um, the order? Let me get the order of the systems correct. Here is the order of the systems. And I think hunger was after pickup system and before render, right? So pickup. We can actually call it pickup now. Generation, AI. Player movement. Actually, what am I doing? I should just select that and hit Control Shift L Delete. Okay, let me fill in the other systems while we're at it. Actually, hung. That's weird. Oh, because I need an end. Okay, generator generation. 
needs to go before hunger. That's weapons, player firing. Player movement. AI. One thing I haven't learned yet is in Lua how to break it up into multiple files and import them. I don't know how to do that yet. Pick up hunger render. Oh, thanks for the follow. Nolex dead beef. Dead beef. Right? There's also, uh, what is it? Bad food. And, uh, bad dude. Dead beef. All valid hexadecimal numbers. Render, yes. Okay, so there's the placeholders for all of my systems. And we're in generation, right? Okay, the add master will m make as another function. Actually, it's X and Y. Add monster. Does this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to need some, obviously I'm going to need some more of uh, the wrappers for the components manager. So const auto becomes just local. Right? And all the semicolons go away. All the components dot become components colon. All of these go away. Okay, component type, all of those go away. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. And then we can put a qu quote, actually, quote, and then go to the end of the word and put another quote. And then I decided to make all those lowercase, right? Okay. And then all the arrows become dots. And we're done, right? I think we're done. Yeah, the multi-cursor stuff is pretty pretty sweet. Okay, so I need create entity and any com create component of type, and I also need is obstacle in the way. I need all of those functions added. Let's do create entity first. That was weird. What did that, what did that do? Does this still work? Yeah, it still works. I hardly ever use that these days. Now that I'm streaming when the kids in, are in, in school and the dog is not barking, I don't have to do that overlay thing. Isn't there a typo in the reward component? Could be. Oh, yeah, there is. Thank you. Thank you for spotting that. Eagle, eagle eyes. <laughs> okay, create entity. Components. So the main wrappers are, where did I put it at the top? Yes. Right, so here. Static int create entity. So we're going to get the that, and it takes no, uh, no arguments. So we just need to call self create entity, and we get back the entity ID. And then we do a Lua a push integer. Convert it to a Lua integer entity ID. And Lua goes first, always. And then return one, right? Does create entity actually take something? Oh no, I don't want that create entity. I want self dot com. Uh, Oh, there is no... Create Entity is an external function. Okay, it does that. 
Yeah, these these external functions are going to probably go away, replaced by the Lua wrappers, which do the same thing, right? So it would just do that, and that becomes self. Right, okay, so that's create entity, and then we hook it up down here somewhere. Here. Compon no, this is that's the template stuff still. Here it is. I put it there. I should probably alphabetize them, right? Create entity. Let's put it in alphabetical order. So that goes up here. All right, so that's create entity. And then I need uh, create component of type. Lua, state, Lua. Is there a reason I'm using vanilla Lua? Um, no, no good reason. I uh, am more familiar with vanilla Lua than Lua JIT. So Lua JIT, I guess you would consider it, or you should consider it as something on my to-do list to learn. I don't. I haven't learned it yet. So I'm just using vanilla Git or uh, vanilla Lua. All right. So the component of type takes uh, the type name and then the entity ID. So we need the the entity ID, and it's we want it to be an int. We can just call that to get it. And that's argument three, because argument two is a string, which is the uh, type name. There. Lua JIT is basically Lua with some, oh, five one with some five two things and Lua JIT C. Cool. I know that Leland Kwong, who also streams on Twitch, she's making a game in Lua. He's using Lua JIT. I'll probably ask him when he's streaming. Uh, where, what, I, what's, what's the best way to learn it? Or I can just look it up myself. But yeah, I haven't, haven't gotten to it yet. I guess I would get to it if Vanilla Lua ends up being too slow. Yes, he's using Love 2D, exactly. Okay, so this crate is kind of like the get, right? It's going to look it up to find the type. Right? And I suppose if we can't find it, we're going to Lua push nil. Gonna return something. This is, it just gets us the type. And then from the type, I can go to that, so. const auto component type equals self component types component type names entry second and I don't need to make a copy just need a reference right so from that I can call create and I can I pass in the entity ID so that is entity ID and I get back a component, which I need to wrap, right? So then that is component type dot push. Uh, why is it saying a size T? I don't remember. Let me look it up. <laughs> yeah, what is, what is that? Oh, it's the index in the. Oh, I, so I have to find it then. I have to, so create. I have to call create to make one, and then I have to find it. Oh, it's actually, it's always going to be at the end, so that's easy. So the it it's pushed and then the, the last one. So it's Lua, and then the last one. So that's component type dot. Actually, I guess I would just get the list, right? List. List. 
the list dot n minus one. Or wait a minute, I need to be careful here. Just push one based. It is one based. So it's n. That's that. What am I doing in Lua? I'm doing the systems in the entity component system for this game. So right now, only the hunger system is in Lua, and I'm porting the rest of them to Lua. The rest of the the system started out in C++. So I'm getting to where this game, all of the game logic will be in Lua, and all the data will be in C++, wrapped with little wrappers to access them in Lua. So yeah, the components that we're wrapping just are just plain structures like that. And I did a bunch of work to make uh, Lua wrappers for those. And now we're taking these systems, like this generation system, and porting it to Lua, where it looks like this. One of your good friends told you that they have a bunch of C, C++ files that are just generic code. So when they start a new project, they essentially work from templates. Yeah, that's a good way to... Yeah, I think that is common. Uh, some tools, some, some IDEs, some tools will generate, like template files for you and not not c++ template we're talking about boilerplate files like a lot of files you'll have the same kinds of stuff like you'll have uh where's a good example you might have a file header with a pragma once and you might have you might want to have some headers that you're always including right and or you, and you might even have a, a class pattern like this where you have the um the rule of five a constructor, and then the pimple pattern, right? So you might take that and store it as a temp as a file that you start all new files like that. So I would say yes, it's a common occurrence. Right, so I think this will work. What does push return? Nothing. Right, it just pushes it onto the Lua stack. Okay, so we're done with that. Pimple pattern, yes. It's, yeah, like that says, a way to separate interface from implementation. So by doing that, by just declaring impl, but not giving a definition, whatever is in impl, like let's say I use some library to implement that, I don't have to expose the fact that I'm using whatever library I'm using in the headers. I only need to include the headers that the overall interface needs. And then the implementation here, we're actually using, um, we could use stuff that we didn't declare in the interface. Here I am declaring Lua as an interface because I need it here. But let's say I didn't have this get Lua. The someone using this uh, script host if they didn't if they didn't need get Lua, they didn't need, they wouldn't even need to know we're using Lua at all and so I could remove these includes and move them up to up to here so that our implementation uses Lua but our interface doesn't need to say it does. So it's just one way of separating Yeah, it is sort of a weird name, Pimple. It stands for a pointer to implementation. And I didn't come up with it. It's in Wikipedia. <laughs> so it must be something I didn't make. All right, so I have get, I have create component of type. We already had get entity of type, right? Yeah, get entity of type. And I think I just needed is obstacle in the way. Yeah, let's try that. So is obstacle in the way. We'll go here, I guess. And it is given three things, X, Y, and then a mask. These are three integers, X, Y, and a mask. Two, three, and four, right? So we'll say if self uh, actually, we're going to move this whole code, right? Yeah, so these old functions are in C++ because the systems were in C++. Their life is limited now because we're going to be moving them here into the uh, wrappers for Lua. Okay, I can't do that. Instead, I do component types type collider list.
right? No, self arrow. Then we loop through and we can remove, okay, get entity component of type. Actually, you know what, we could do this in Lua. Right, there's nothing I'm doing here that I can't do in Lua. Let's do it in Lua. Function is obstacle in the way. Components X, Y, mask. So, uh, this part of it, right? Porting to Lua. So, const auto becomes local. This becomes just a components. Uh, what was it originally? Get components of type. Collider. No semicolons. So I can actually remove all semicolons. Remove all semicolons. And then uh, this is just um, for... Actually, this is wrong, isn't it? Oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, that was wrong. No, maybe that is right. Oh, right. I'd, I had that as a convenience. Why is that a col colon, though? It should just be a dot. Yeah, that's just indexing, right? But that, yeah, I don't have git and git components of type. It's just, yeah, right. So for collider, in components colliders do and then this is all simplified so position right local position equals components get entity component of type that becomes a position and that stays the same and then if right if position then and there's no continue in Lua, so I'll just do is reverse this. Actually, you know what we can do? We can say if position and position x equals x and position y equals y and mask and collider mask, then, or just return, right? Return. No, it's if, then return true, and and then only if we fall out do we return false. That becomes an end. All right. So for all for all colliders, get the position. If there's a position and it's the given position, and the mask is, um, you know, there's a match in the mask when we do a bitwise and. Actually, I need to look up. Two things, right? Can we do a bitwise and and a bitwise invert in Lua? I don't remember. Let me look it up. Lua bitwise operators. There we go. Oh, do I have to do bit or? I can't. Okay. It has, it has native support. Oh, okay. It's built in. There we go. Yeah, I'm using 5. Dot, uh, what am I using? I can ask my uh, shell what I'm using. That is build Lua Lua. Lua Lua. I'm using 5.3.4. So yeah, we're good with um, those, those bitwise operators, right? Okay, yeah, so I don't need the code is obstacle in the way at all. Bye-bye. All right. I, did, I needed one more thing, didn't I? No, I didn't. I think we're done. I can try generate. So the test will be now I will remove the generation system and see if the Lua generation system can take over. Nice stream number, yeah, zero, one, two, three. Hey there, Clayman, how's it going? 
And I should say hey to Nikito97, who has given me uh, the names of the Bitwise operators. All right, so it's, it did build, right? Sometimes I build and I don't even look to see if it built correctly. Control C, do it again. There's the test, right? Nope, we're getting errors. Attempt to call a nil value and there's no stack trace. Great. <laughs> to call a nil value. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Function arguments expected near do on line 50, line 31. Oh, right. That's not a function. Dot. Actually, uh, I don't even need to restart the code. I can just do w update. That was the whole point of doing it in Lua in the first place, right? Connect again. Okay, I did the colon problem one more place. Yeah, here. And then update. Try again. Unexpected symbol near not. Oh, right. Not is tilde. Right? Line 53. Or is it not? Is it? It's not, right? Okay, I don't remember. Okay, see you, Clavinex. Thanks for stopping by. Whoops, I hit new. <laughs> that doesn't seem right to me. So it didn't like... Okay, let me look it up. These little things I always forget. Uh, be faster if I just searched it here, right? I want a Boolean not... Or... Boolean. Uh, search up, please. It would be like and or yeah. I'm wondering if it's uh, but t the tilde was the uh, bitwise not right. It's a bitwise not. Where is the um, boolean not? Is it just not? Okay. So it's not. It just I guess because the colorizer didn't show it special, I was confused. Alright, update play the game again. Oh, someone's at the door. I'll be right back.
All right. Yeah. So some workers are here to check the le leak in the roof. Oh, thanks for following, Clay, man. Is that a phone camera taking photo of a screen? Yeah. It's just something cool that I liked. A bit of code that you uh, you might find useful if you're calculating the uh, coordinate transformation matrix to uh, point a camera in 3D space. Yeah, it got a little leak in the roof. It's been raining a lot, so the leak is now apparent. So, Okay, what am I doing wrong? Is obstacle in the way? All right, it's not part of components anymore. It's our own function. I'm getting there. So I might have to um, go B, um, BRB in a little bit when the workers want to talk to me. Attempt to call and index. Attempt to index a number value. Oh, local components. Hold on. So that's line 31. Can you guys hear my dog barking? She doesn't like that there are unknown strangers in the house. Colliders. Oh, right, because I need to pass it. Is obstacle in the way needs components. Did you guys hear the, bar the barking dog? I guess I, c I don't want to put her outside because it's raining. But she likes to uh, talk to the work, to uh, any anyone who she doesn't know. Uh, update. Yeah, I don't, I'm not putting her outside. She's in she's in her little uh, crate right now that she sleeps in, barking away, saying, "I want to talk to those strangers that I don't know." Create component of type was up here, right? Oh, I didn't I didn't write this one. No, I did write that one. Oh, I didn't hook it up though. Yeah, so I wrote it there, but I didn't hook it up. So near create entity here. There we go. That one I have to restart the the uh, back end though because I'm building code. Do it. Okay. Oh, it's working. Look, ghosts are coming out of the generator. That's a Lua-based generator. You know, I should do a sanity check, though. I think my sanity check was we'll, we'll generate in two squares away. So that was here, right? So... I guess this would be time... No. Uh, four, uh, four times, right? No. That times two. Let's just do, well, I could do both of them. Okay. So without, without stopping the server, we'll just update the logic and start a new game. And now they should be spawned two squares away from the generator. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so we got the generation system done. <sighs> Update. Okay, cool. So let's check that in. Actually, I can delete the old generation system now, right? This is the moment of truth. Can I delete the generation system and have uh, it still work? <laughs> so remove the generation system. Uh, we're still including the header file. We don't need to. There we go. Commit first. Yeah, I'm not that, I'm not that uh, brave. Or did I commit it already? I did commit it. I was very brave. Sure, I have confidence that this, uh... Oh, I didn't commit that. 
No, let's 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 commit first. No, 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 no. Bad idea. Let's test first, then commit. Cool. All right. Look, it works. Remove the generation system. Replaced it with Lua. And I made placeholders for the other systems while we were at it. Right? Replace a port generation system to Lua. A replace, yeah, just port. Port sounds good to me. Yeah, Tess. <laughs> Ella, Ella giggle. Actually, when you do Ella giggle, do you have to giggle? <laughs> Is that an Ella giggle? All right. Next system, I guess. What do we have left? Pickup system's pretty easy, right? Let's port the pickup system. So at this point, I already have a placeholder, so I'm just going to take the code and go to the systems and paste it in the pickup function. <clears throat> All right. Const auto becomes local. So that is, um, that's just heroes. Please enable Pepega emote. <laughs> That's in, was that an FFZ or BTTV? I don't want to, I don't want to, I'll do it, I'll do it for next time. Ranker Z, okay. What's my reasoning behind porting this stuff into Lua? Because I want to change the logic without having to build the backend, like stop the server, build, you know, replace the code, start it up again. I want to do it. It's like hot swapping of the code. And I know it c I could do that in C++, but it's so much easier to do it with an interpreted language. Also, the, uh, the code is cleaner, I think, because I can do patterns like this. So arguably, it could be cleaner also if I use JavaScript or some other language, but, you know. I kind of I kind of like Lua. So this is just components heroes now. Uh dot. And the n is that if heroes if number of heroes is not 1 then return end. Can you walk through really quick how you share the data between Lua and C++? Okay, so the way you do it, the Lua runs inside of the C++ program. And I made a class that creates the Lua interpreter state, which is Lua new state. And then when it's destroyed, it calls Lua close, which is the opposite. And in this link Lua, it's setting up the wrappers. So what you do is you make a meta table and you attach to the meta table a garbage collector, a finalizer function, an indexer, and a um, new indexer. The indexer is like the getters, new index is the setters. And you can attach other things like uh, methods if you want. That's what I did. And um, when we call Lua, that's through Lua P call. That would be probably from uh, this, cla uh, this class. When we call Lua, we can, um, or, or before this call, so this load script, this is how you call Lua from C++, is you call Lua P call. P staying for protected. So uh, when we call it, it's inside here. And actually, I do, do I call it from two places? Oh, no, this is loading it. So I call it once to load it, and then I call the functions again. Um, in this call. Oh, there's a lot of things call. <laughs> Just look for it here. Right, so when we call a Lua function, we can push onto the Lua stack the arguments. So one of the things I'm pushing onto the stack is this, um, an object, a C++ object, which we use a user data. So Lua new user data pushes an object which represents something in the C or C++ side. And then when you set the meta table, when Lua tries to use that user data object, it'll go to the meta table, 
for all the properties. So the, the thing I just showed before, so setting up that meta table was here. So if you ever try to get a property, you would call this indexer, right? Which I have it set up so where it goes and um, uh, the, the things you can index from the components are things like heroes, right? So here I have it go um, basically put another user data onto the Lewis stack, which represents the collection that we want. So like if it was heroes, it would be looking, it would find the heroes. It's, it's finding it from this map, right? So there, there are these user datas that are wrappers that Lua uses to call you back into C++. And then the other direction is through Lua P call. Yes, so the, you could think of the Lua interpreter is, is embedded in the C++ program. And we can call it with Lua P call, and it can call us back if we give it user data things with methods attached to, this, to the meta table. Since you know both the sizes, you can use some functions to do that. Sizes. Yeah, we, we have to tell the uh, we have to tell Lua when you make a user data how much how many bytes you need to store the uh, C C plus plus thing. So the things I'm putting in these wrappers are just pointers to my main class. You could put anything you want though. You could put a string. You could put in a number. I I just make it a pointer to my to my class so that when we're called back in our own our own methods we we. This is how you recover that pointer. Check you data, and then you cast it to the pointer type, and then you can access your own class. So it's although it's a static method, you get your this pointer, so to speak, recovered from the u data that uh, Lua gives you back. And when I mean embedded, I mean it's actually built into the program. Oh, I think the workers are back. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. So workers, the workers that my co wife called to fix the leak in the roof are going to do, do it, and I got to write them a check. So I'm just going to, I can continue to talk, but I'm going to hide the camera for a bit. So yeah, I'm just writing, a, writing them a check. You guys want to know how much it costs to uh, fix a leak in the roof? Can you guess? Can you guess how much it costs? It costs money, yes, exactly. That's actually not that bad of a guess, it would be. It's a little bit less than that. My dog is still barking. She really wants to meet these roofers.
It was a 275. Two hundred seventy five clams to fix the leak. Yeah, well, it's b better than having a um, waterlogged, damaged roof, right? On the inside. Our roof actually lasted 20 years, so I'm not too unhappy about it. Well, we have to get a new roof pretty soon anyway. Exactly 275 dollars. All right. Pieces of cursed Aztec gold. Yes. Cutting these guys a check for fixing the roof. Yeah. Well, but it's good to have a home. We should all be grateful for the uh, shelter we have, right? I'll be right back. I'm going to give these guys a check and get back to coding. I'm back, and my glasses are all wet, because it's wet outside. They actually have one guy up there walking on the roof as we speak. So, the, the leak was around a pipe that needed to be resealed. I guess the seal worn out, wore out, and uh, that's why the water is, water is getting in. Okay. Right, I was just explaining the how this is done and i was working on the pickup system right yep 275 buck reseal i guess like we could do it ourselves but when it's raining and the water's getting in you kind of want an expert to do it right away <laughs> okay we don't need this and the not equals becomes uh tilde equals right and then so we don't need all this stuff it's just local hero equals Heroes 1. Never do it. Always we could do it ourselves. Well, if I did it myself, I'd screw it up, right? No semicolons in Lua. Okay, and this is much simpler, right? It was this. Player position is hero and a DID. And then we're getting the health as well. It is health. Oh, same reason programmers get recruited? Because you can't do the coding yourself, so you hire a programmer? Okay, so this one's easy to do. If, if not player position or not player health, I don't need a uh, then return end. I guess I can let my dog out of the crate and sh so she can be happy. I'll be right back again. Sorry, sorry for all the uh, BRBs, but this is this is for a good cause. Let letting the dog out of the crate. All right, I'm back. 
Either request enable Monka hmm emote as well. Okay. Sure. Is there a limit to how many emotes I can enable? I will take requests until I fill up and then I got a Pepe hands. What? You and your emotes, Ubi. <laughs> 25? Okay. You can always, uh, in, the, in my Discord, you can always list the ones you want as well. Okay. Oh, I'm getting a call. Uh, now I need to mute. I'll be right back. I'll answer this phone call. Oh, okay, yeah, that was just my wife making sure that, actually, she, I, I called her to make sure that these really were the right roofers and they're not just going around. You know, you always wonder, like, after it rains a lot, you might have people come by and um, try to scam you. Say, oh, we're just in the area. We saw that you have a leak. So I'm just making sure. Even if you ask them, hey, are you the guys that my wife called? They, they might say, sure, yeah, we are. <laughs> and, and And not be, you know. Uh-oh, playing with scissors doesn't like those emotes. We got an emote battle. Watch out, because playing with scissors has got that sword. You, you, you got to pass the uh, playing with scissors test. We Smart is not a bad emote, is it? Pog. Pog is a safe one. I can enable Pog. Oops. Copy. Paste. There we go. Pepe hands is the best. Was that already on the list? Yeah. Okay. All right. If not player position or not player health, then return end. Okay. So pickups. So we're going to loop through all pickups, right? So for pickup in components, pickups. Do. And then we have an entities destroyed list we need. Local entities destroyed equal uh, destroyed is that. Then we have the pickup, and then we get the position of the pickup. Local position. I think we have a clash of cultures going on, Ubi. I think there are multiple Twitch cultures, and you and Playing With Scissors, I think, are from slightly different Twitch subcultures. So you know what you need to do in the real world, right? When you are, are meeting people from different cultures is respect, right? <laughs> okay, position. I guess, and it would be uh, understanding or something. Let's see, pickup dot entity ID. Well, but you have to, you have to remember, playing with scissors is usually joking. I'm sure he's just joking. Please be please be uh, nice to each other. <laughs> okay, so if position, then then we do the rest, right? Actually, it's if position. Actually, we can do all in one line. If position and position x equals player position x and position y equals player position y, then. All right. We have no switches. Let me let me just do the outer stuff first. So this this four in is with i pairs instead or in that do kill entity 
Did I have... I already had kill entity. Good. So we kill it. End. Oh, I think he... I think he just meant the ones he suggested. Not that he made them, but he suggested them. If exited, then... And that's end. Exited. Exited. So we need a local exited equals false to begin with. Right, so then local tile, it's components, colon, get of type tile, hero entity ID, right? And then if tile, then tile dot destroyed is true, end. And then we, do I have that wrapped? I don't know if I do. I have to add a new wrapper. Yep, I need to add that. So this will be destroy entity of type position. Hero dot entity ID. You're about to ban somebody from your Discord server for bothering you asking to enable emotes. Oh. Are you, you're not joking, are you? I didn't know you had a Discord server. <clears throat> or is this popping up in uh, my Discord server? No. I didn't know you had a Discord server playing with scissors. Oh, for a subreddit, okay. Yeah, so he's, so playing with scissors is just a bit, little bit sensitive about emotes, so. I can understand that. Okay. Destroy position. Okay, yeah, the switch. You wouldn't say sensitive? I would be sensitive if I was running into that problems, yeah. Well, I, I maybe I'm not picking the right words. There's no switch there's no switch in Lua. There's no switch in Lua. What's the pattern people use though? If else. Or a table. Eh, we'll just do a crude way. We'll say if pickup type equals treasure, then hero dot score equals hero dot score plus. Let's get rid of all semicolons while we're at it. Uh, try again. And then hero, yeah, so this insert thing is like I did before here. Yeah, Lua's got, it's got, uh, curious things. You, you, you could do a little bit of metaprogramming to, um, like I could make a um, method called add to. It's just you can't overload symbols, like you can't make a plus equals. But otherwise, I think that actually people have made changes, like forks of Lua, to add stuff like plus equals. All right, anyway, this is that. And we're distro we're removing the pickup, right? And then this is an else if pickup.type is food, then. And we destroy the entity, else, if it's a potion. And again, destroy it if it's the exit. I wonder if I should just have a flag saying um, destroy pickup. Really, is that what pickup system does? Oh no, it's exited equals true. So I don't need this. It's just that. End. Yep, array start at one. That's why we have to have this uh, plus one. I, to me, it's not, it, to me, the 
a race starting at zero or one is on the same level as a, as as an observation that a language either does or doesn't have braces or does or doesn't require special indentation. There may be curiosities or annoyances, but I kind of get over it. Hold on, I got another phone call. Phone call, be right back. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Phone call, exactly. All right. And you know what? This, it kind of annoys me that this is long. I think I'm going to fix this. So I'm going to take this and put it here. If destroy pickup, then I'll put it here. All right. And then we'll have a flag. And then I'll just set it to true here. Actually, let's have it default to true and then set when it's false so we don't destroy the exit. That's the only one we don't destroy. Right? Okay, so this will work if I add this destroy entity component type, right? I'm missing that in the wrappers right here. Let's add that. You guys sick of Lua yet? I like Lua, so I don't get sick of it, but maybe you guys are. If so, I'm I'm sorry. Oh, why did that return? That doesn't make sense. We don't need to return. It's void. Interesting, I didn't get a warning about it. Do it in JavaScript, please. Yeah, <laughs> I'll consider it. Okay. Right, so we need to look up self component types. And then the type is type. Oh, hold on, we have to get the type, right? Type name. It do some of this stuff. Right, some of the same stuff. So type name, we don't have... No, we do have an entity ID. We're not returning anything, so it's just that it's not equal to... We do the thing, which is... Not to create, but to destroy. And we don't need to return anything. So return zero. And this doesn't return anything. Right? Just destroy, right? Not kill? Yeah, destroy. Okay, now I need to hook it up. Hooking it up is like doing this. There. No problemo. Yeah, Ubi likes his uh, his um, emotes for sure. But um, actually, um, if I could ask you one thing, Ubi, uh, could you try to combine some of your messages onto the same line instead of having um, a spamming? Um, like two or three lines every time you say something, that'd be good. That would be a, a little bit nicer, I think. Let's see. Okay. I forgot what system I hooked up. <laughs> Oh, it was the pickup system, which is working now, right? Because I'm picking things up. Actually, did I remove the old pickup system? I don't think I did. Let me remove the old pickup system. Removing it. Leave the code in for a second. Y you can't bend yourself, but playing with scissors can. See, so, watch, so watch out. <laughs> Be nice. Okay, connect. Let's try to pick something up. Nope, it's not working. It's not working. I can't pick it up. 
No. Okay, let's try to find out what I did wrong. Pick up, which goes here. Remember, here is not one, then end. Get the hero. Get the position and health. So a lot of these, a lot of these places, it could have ended. So let 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 me um in in addition to returning, we'll print out something. So this will be components diagnostic mess diagnos diagnostic message. Number of heroes is not equal to one. And then this return also, let's print something else. Hero has, hero is missing position or health. All right, so I'm gonna put update that and then try again. Hero is missing position and or health, that's the problem. You don't commit when you are brave, you commit when you're scared. That's true. Picked up the ghost, yeah. Well, no, the ghosts are the ghosts destroy themselves when they run into you. That's how it works on Gauntlet. Um, you need to shoot the ghosts, not melee. Do I suppose take a... Oh, uh, did I say something wrong, Ubi? I'm sorry. You might have misinterpreted something I said. Remember, I'm not very good with words. I was just asking to, like, when 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 you um, chat a, a, a line with this, just a single emote and then another line with another emote, if you could combine the two lines together and put the emotes on the same line, that'd be good. Well, playing with scissors is my mod, so... What's the issue with that? It uh, gets a little spammy. So it's just something that uh, it'd be nice to condense a little bit, the chat. That's all. Don't take it the wrong way. I'm just asking for a little compression. <laughs> okay, not player or not player health. Did I spell them wrong? Ah, misspelling. That's what it is. That's it. At least I hope that's it. Oh, now it picked up everything right away. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's this position thing is not right. Hit position and... And... Player position. Oh, um, it should be... This is, um, this is wrong. We destroy the... Yeah, let's make it false... Actually, um, we can move this in here and move that in there. That's simplest. Let me just tell you guys, I'm not the most socially adept and also, um, okay, it's picking them up as a little bit of delay. Oh, I think that's because the ren it's picking them up after the rendering system runs. So it's being delayed by a tick. So it looks like it's there for a tick and then disappears. That's fine. We'll fix that when we move the rendering system into Lua. Okay, good. So it's there. Let me remove the old one. Pickup system. Goodbye, pickup system. Flooding the chat. Yeah, so the problem the problem is mostly that that the chat window up there, right there, right there, doesn't hold a whole lot of lines. So if you if you were to like write five lines quickly in succession, it kind of blows away everyone else's stuff. So that that's that's really the only reason. I know in the normal Twitch chat, you can scroll back, but um, yeah, it's harder to scroll back when it's on my screen. Okay. What was I doing here? 
Oh, I was just looking at it. All right, I was going to check it in, right? Oh, no, I know what I was doing. I was going to remove the old pickup system. There we go. Now it's definitely gone, and I can restart it and verify it. I can still pick things up. Pick up the treasure. Yes, okay, good. Oh, wait a minute. There's something wrong. Do you see what's wrong? I pick it up, it goes away, but my score doesn't increase. My score is not increasing. Okay, yeah, the, the, um, it doesn't get down into here. Is it because I capitalized them? I don't remember. What did I do? Let's print out what it is. Picking up. Dot, dot, pick up, dot, type. There, we'll do that. Now I gotta go pick it up. So pick up some treasure, pick up a potion, pick up food, and finally pick up the exit. And yeah, I think maybe the strings aren't right. Oh, never even got there. It never got in there? What? Pick up. I should print them all out every single tick. Oh, they are capitalized. How come it didn't um, print that though? Let's print this and then we'll say else, print something else. Pick up missing position. Actually, hold on. If position, then else end. I don't like that it outdents those. That annoys me. I wonder if that's something I could fix. Pattern you use for switches. Let's look at that. Oh, right. Yeah, that's the lookup table approach. That's probably smarter. Um, I could try that. Let me try that in a second. So... The cool thing is I can just do rapid testing like this. Okay, so they're all, they all have a position. Picking up at position.x by position.y, question mark. All right, we have positions. Um, I'm, I'm, what, I'm guessing I have something wrong here. Oh, why didn't I print that twice? So uh, let me fix these. Oh, I don't know why it's not printing something when I hit the pickup. I don't need that. And I, let's just comment that one out for now. Oh, I have a call, uh, attempt to call a nil value. Oh, wait, hold on. That means that something didn't parse. End of file. So I'm missing an end somewhere. This end. Let's 
scroll down again so I can see it. Weird, it's working now, but it's not printing anything. Oh, because I removed it. I'm just being dumb, you know? Being really dumb. Okay, try one more time. Okay, now it's working. Okay, so let's see what the bug was. If I check this in, see what changed? Oh, I didn't. I don't know what I. Ch I think the. I think it was just that I had these not capitalized, right? They can't. Oh, and I had. I was destroying the pickup all the way. Okay, so anyway, it's working now. That's what's important. So port the uh, pickup system to Lua. Push that and running out of C++ systems. I'm kind of holding off on render because render ne needs something extra, which is this um, WebSocket, which I have not wrapped yet. M I guess we can do movement next. Okay, so preemptively remove player movement from the list. Take movement and paste it into Lua. And then go port it. So const auto becomes local. Okay, th all right, this gets abbreviated, right? For input in components, inputs, do. Okay, so let's abbreviate this. If not move cooldown. Oh no, if it is, right? Then we have to, that's no longer a comment. It's actually a decrement. Else if not input fire, then the rest of it, right? Oh, I was going to do the, I forgot, I was going to do the uh, updating the switch, right? This ever is interesting in that it's exactly the opposite of the work you put in recently. You had to take Lua and port it to C++? Yeah, it happens. You know, when you're on the freeway and have you ever th had this thought? You're on the freeway going from one place to another. There's someone on the opposite side going the other way. Doesn't that strike you as a little bit inefficient? What if you stayed where you were and then just did what the other one was going to do? I'm sure there are examples that were, where that's true, right? It's sort of inefficient that you and someone else are swapping positions just to do, I guess not exactly swapping, but let's say on, on a long, tr long travel between states, right? You're going a, a thousand miles and someone is doing the opposite trip going a thousand miles the other direction. Or maybe if you knew the other person, you could do what they wanted and, and they could do what you wanted and not have to travel. Efforts that seemingly cancel out, yeah. It's just a weird thought that I have when I'm on the road sometimes. That's the someone else is going the opposite journey that I am. Okay, local, this is, remove this Chrome. This is position. Remove all semicolons. If position, then. The rest of it. So I could remove some of these extra indentations by either calling a function or by doing a go to, but I don't feel like doing that right now. Wait a minute, is this? Okay, I see. So collider. Right, M local mask equals collider and how's this? It's like collider and collider mask or zero, right? 
Is that how you do the the uh Dog's barking again. Lua ternary. It's like and or, right? And or, exactly. Collider and collider mask or zero. I guess that's how you do it in JavaScript too, right? This side must be truthy. Yeah, so it's truthy. It's either null or it's an it's an object. So that'll work. Okay, let's do the new the the switch with a table. So that would be local. Actually, I'm I'm just gonna look up what. Uh, Oh, I didn't, I didn't see this other link. You're saying go-tos are scoped and can't break anything except of that. Right, so this is the way I would do a continue. But I just don't feel like doing go-tos right now. I'm, it's ingrained in me not to do go-tos. Uh, but the other link I wanted to look at, the pattern that you use for switches. Let's try it out. Okay, so it is about... I, was, I wasn't sure if it should be local or if I should make it global. I don't know. I didn't know you could do that syntax. Oh, actually, I did, I did know. I just forgot. I do remember now. So it would be... Um, I guess move. Moves? Right, and then J equals, and then it's function. Components position. The comma, right? Yep, so here it would be if components Actually, we don't need components, right? Is obstacle in the way is a function that we have. And let's put this at the top. Utilities, systems. So I need another utility, add monster, right? All right, so, so if I'll, uh, if this, right? If that, so that arrows become dots. And it's a knot, right? Then end. All right, so it's the same thing, right? L. I and K. Can't jump globally. Right, they do cache her, yeah. So they're somewhat safe. Uh, what's wrong with GoTo Clayman? I'm just, in, it's been ingrained in me not to use it. Just as a habit. <laughs> There's nothing really wrong with it. The meaning of GoTo D d depends on the language. So like Shake Soda saying it's somewhat safer in Lua. I guess it handles uh, s scoping and all that. Pull. Oops. Single cursor, please. Okay. And this is a plus. Did I get that right? So then the idea is, let's make, let me compare again. Is to just you do the lookup function. So local move delegate. Let's call let's let's call this delegates. Equals move delegates input dot move. If move delegate, then move delegate. I don't need components, actually, do I? Just need position. So then that replaces the switch. Set workbench tree indent to 16. Makes it much easier to decipher the file tree. Oh, you mean this, this thing? 
Let's try it out. Settings. Oh, this is different. They changed this. They used to show side by side. I don't know if I like it this way. And yeah, what if I wanted to search? They changed it on me. They changed it on me. So how do you do the old way? Is it is it that pencil thing that it was showing? What is that doing? Oh, uh, I don't know if I like this. They changed it. The window like icon in the top right. No, but I want to see the defaults on the left. Remember how it used to be? They would show the defaults on the pane on the le left and then what you have over right, over right on the right. Control plus to enter settings. Control plus. Oops, I accidentally zoomed. No, for me, control plus zooms. <laughs> I think the key mappings are different. Okay, let, 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 let's try this setting. Workbench dot tree dot indent sixteen. Oh, look at that! Why do sixteen when you can do thirty-two or sixty-four? I guess there's a limit. That's cool. Makes it easier to see. It didn't. It didn't uh, indent that. Change that indent. I guess that's a different indent. Open editors indent or something. That's cool. All right. Okay, this is then end. Oh, and I wanted to make that a uh, nil, right? Or empty string. Tile is that tile. If tile, then tile dirty equals true end. I don't know how I feel about um, single line versus broken up like that. I kind of like that better. But for early returns, I've been doing it in one line. Now, should I give it a try? Build. This build is to remove the old player movement system. And then... Uh-oh. Oh, I still had that print in there. I guess we died in that we were missing our position. That makes sense. If we die, we would we would lose our position. Okay, not working. I have a bra brace in there, obviously. 48. Here it is. It's, it's just function. So we just remove these. And, oh, I need an end instead of these, right? There we go. Yeah, I'm, I, I feel the same way. Only early returns, single line, yeah. And that was just a Lua change, so I can do an update and then just see it change, right? Uh, not working. Okay. Oh, is it still telling me there's an error? Yeah, there's still an error somewhere. End expected to close function at line 38. Oh, do I not have the right number of ends here? Oh, there's the end. I guess uh, as punishment for making that mistake, I will split that into multiple lines. Update. Connect. Can I move now? I still can't move. Ah, I can't move. 
parsed correctly, it just didn't want to move. Okay, why not? Let's print out here. Move. Input move. It's never getting that. It's never even getting that far. Do we have an input? Let's see that first. Input. We'll print out the entity ID if we get that far. We do have an input. Is it being cooled down, though? It's constantly on cooldown. That's the problem. Oh, I think I wrote this wrong. It's if it is greater than zero. Yeah, everything is a table in Lua. It's sort of good and bad. It's simple, so if you need to start doing uh, more complicated things, it's a problem. Okay, and not on cooldown anymore, but it's also not moving. <sighs> okay. Do we have a position? Actually, let's see. Not firing. Let's just instrument all of these. Position. Actually, I don't need to do that because do that, I was already doing that. Let's just see what it does. Is it already past four hours? I thought I would get this done. But I'm I'm running out of time. It's just not getting in there. I should have printed something. Unless it was oh, that's this. A uh, fire. If fire e equals empty string, because it's always a string. That's probably what it was. Betcha. Yep. Oh, now I have a syntax error. Attempt to index, okay, line 21. Oh, is obstacle in the way needs a components. Shoot. There we go. Uh, components. In Lua JIT, at least the string comparisons get prehashed to be as fast as an enum. Hmm. Cool. You don't have to pass position either. Oh, I don't have to do that? But I'm calling it down here. Oh, you're saying it has access to the variables. Okay. You're probably right. You're saying I don't need to do this at all. Let's give it a try. What's the worst that could happen? It could just not work. It hasn't been working yet, so I wouldn't be losing and I wouldn't be uh wouldn't be at a loss. Connect. Hey, you were right. I do notice it's slower now. Probably probably because I am 
I did not have built this optimized. And I'm printing out a bunch of junk. So let's not print out a bunch of junk. That's interesting. Oh no, I was just hitting the wrong key. I'm like, the firing stopped working. Firing is working. Cool. And we can't run into obstacles. Nice. And we can run into ghosts. Oh no, we can't. I don't think the masking is working. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't letting me run through the ghost. Uh... Let's print out our mask. That prints out our own mask. Need to fix that too. Our mask is one. Probably the problem is in there in here, right? I wonder if I need to do, like, not equal to zero here. Actually, uh, let me put that there. Did I miss your question? When will it be the ideal time to have a word about something uh, after the stream or in the morning? After the stream is fine. Sorry about missing the question. I hope I didn't screw up. I know I was I was trying to uh kind of settle things down with the um with the emote stuff. Maybe I said the wrong word, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry about my inattentiveness. What else did I miss? Correct local functions capture, right. Hey there, tropical banana man. I'm gonna guess that I had to do a not equal to zero there. Let's see. Okay, that was it, yeah. So now I can collide with the ghosts doesn't stop me, but I can't collide with walls. Good. Okay. All right. Time to check it in. I probably should end pretty soon because I don't think I have enough time to get all of them done today. I don't. I actually don't really have to do them all on stream either, right? Oh, I I didn't delete the player old player movement system. I'll probably continue this off stream because you guys have had enough of Lua, right? So, player position, player movement. Oh, uh, it was, hold on, go back to that. It's in the way if when you and the two masks if you don't get zero. So before it was it was just that, but it didn't work, I think. I think it was that. So my guess is that I have to compare with zero and that it be not equal to zero. If they're equal to zero, that means they do not collide. Zero is truthy? Yeah, so I'm um that that's definitely I'm tripping up on that because in C plus plus zero is not truthy. It is falsy. 
All right. Got it, got it, got it. Yes. Okay, so this is port player movement to Lua. And there was another fix in here, right? This one. So let me not, let me unstage that line. Check it in separate. And then move the utilities around. I can, I can combine that in here. So that is that. And then this change is a fix bug in, is obstacle in the way. In Lua, zero is truthy. So a comparison to zero is needed. Okay, how many more systems do I have? One, two, three, four. I have four more systems, and I how many have I done today? Player movement, generation, pickup. I, I had hunger before. So I did three. So yeah, I think the rest will take me longer than I want to spend for on stream today. It's truthy in Lua, apparently, playing with scissors. I didn't I didn't think it was, but uh, now I have learned that it is. Okay, so I'm, I haven't decided yet whether I'll do this on stream or not, but the, to finish this up, I need to port the weapon system, the firing system, the AI, and the renderer. So I'll, I'll either do that... Actually, I'm not streaming tomorrow. That's another thing I have to talk about. Yes, so it's pr in the U.S. it's President's Day weekend for um, school systems, so my kids are out of school, so I'm not going to be streaming tomorrow or Monday. So either... So my next stream will be on Tuesday, and either I'll be finishing up these systems, or I'll do these off-stream, and I'll have some completely other plan. You had hunger before, then spaghetti. <laughs> the kids don't actually want to do programming. It's kind of sad. They think programming is like math, which is like school, and they don't want to do it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll come up with what I'm going to do on Tuesday when I return. It it may or may not be finishing up these systems. So I hope you enjoyed watching today, and uh, I'll be I'll, playing with scissors. I'll talk to you right after I end the stream. Okay. So here my schedule will be um, not tomorrow or Monday, but so Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. In the meantime, I got a Discord. Please join and uh, chat there if you want. I have an announcement channel there I post to right before I stream. And uh, also, the, my notes being in one note here, I'll have, this happens sometimes, I'll have a um, note for 0124 for Tuesday morning, where I'll talk about what I'll be doing. I hope you enjoyed today. And you probably have gotten your fill of Lua. And for that, I apologize. I like Lua, even though it's sort of controversial. But I'll spare you the Lua. I'll probably do the more, more of the Lua off stream. I'm just looking off stream to see who we can raid. Oh, bother is going. You never get your fill, Lua. That's good. I have some choices here, so. There's like three or four devs that are streaming now. I bet we'll all I'll raid one of the um, not as popular devs. So kind of, maybe you've never seen this one before. You can see a new dev. I'm just watching an ad here. Wait, waiting through the ad to see if he's still streaming. Okay, he's still going. So we're going to raid Phalanx Games who appears to be working on a 2D pixel RPG, which is kind of like I, what I'm trying to do. So we'll say hi to him and hope you enjoy today and we hope you enjoy a Phalanx Games, all right? Am I not spelling? Oh, it's, fa it's not Phalanx. It's Phalanx Games. There we go. All right, so there, Raid is in the queue. Let us say hi. 
Okay. Bye-bye.